I apologize for the slight delay. Um, I had to call the July 28, 2016 regularly scheduled meeting of the Plattman's Parish, Port Harbor, and Terminal District uh, to order at uh, 1.04 p.m. Um, we can do a, do a roll call, please. Mayor Junior. Uh, let the record reflect that all nine council members are present uh, in attendance, as well as the parish president, Mr. Terrio, and our executive director, Mr. Sanders, and his staff. Uh, if you would please stand for uh, the prayer of Ms. Salvan. Acknowledge Almighty God. Thank him for our bountiful blessings, especially for the parish natural resources. We give thanks to God for our brave and courageous men and women in our military who daily risk their lives to protect our precious, precious freedom. And we pray for our world leaders to know how to obtain world peace. We pray that this government body, comprised of both council and administration, will always serve our parish with honesty, humility, and equality to all. And as this government body gathers here today, we pray for the wisdom to know right from wrong and the courage to do that which is right. Amen. Mr. Burke, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. We have no executive session today. Therefore, we'll move to item number three, a status report by the executive court director, Mr. Sanders. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board, I am Sandy Sanders. I am the executive director of Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District. What follows is my executive director's report for the reporting period of 23 June to 28 July of 2016. During this time frame, we met with David Olson, who is the general manager of CHS Grain Terminal, along with uh, Councilman John Barthelme to discuss the expansion of their barge fleeting operation, which will create an additional 20 to 30 new jobs. Uh, Mr. Olson is very excited. He's been here for over a year. He's excited about his new environment. This is the first time that he has been placed in a position as a general manager and uh, he is, uh, again, very excited about the job and the community. I have invited him to the August board meeting to give a PowerPoint presentation of CHS and the economic impact that they have to our community. At this point, I will defer to uh, Councilman Bartholomew if you'd like to add anything about our meeting that we had. Director, his efforts for trying to increase the uh, port activity at Plaquemine and Paris. I welcome you in. During this time frame, we also met twice with uh, the uh, members of the Sea Point organization regarding their ship to barge concept as they are refining their business plan. It is an a ongoing operation, and uh, we, we welcome them. Uh, hopefully, they will come up with a great alternative that we can add that arrow to our, our quiver when we build a port. <clears throat> we received an outgoing uh, audit brief by Ed Camnetter and Jamie Rogers of Camnetter and Company CPAs. The results of this audit were outstanding, and once again, I'd, I'd like to recognize Shambrell Riley and her team for the, for the wonderful uh, time that they spent in, uh, in the audit that they put forth. There were no findings and no recommendations for improvement uh, that were issued. So once again, Shambrell, thank you and your team for her job well done. <clears throat> I met with Ms. Brandy Christian during this time frame. She is the incoming executive director of the Port of New Orleans. Uh, very interesting. She uh, came from the Port of San Diego. Most of her background is with uh, containers and cruise ships. 
I uh, have also invited her, and if she has accepted, to address our board at a future port board meeting. We have begun a series of meetings with port and terminal operators, sharing with them our strategic vision and our action plan in a rudimentary um, phase one and phase two of a port build-out plan. Our intent is to meet uh, the larger entities that specialize in these port and terminal operations, uh, those that have funds that uh, would like to invest and to gain their interest. This will be an ongoing project. Thus far, we have met with three entities. Uh, two of them have really shown a lot of promise. Also met during this time frame with Councilman Roberts and Template of the Jefferson Parish Council. This is a follow-up to our brief with Jefferson Parish President Michael Yenny regarding the strategic vision and action plan as outlined in the LA-23 project. I briefed the POBI membership last week at a July membership meeting on the LA-23 project as well. We are slated to brief uh, GNO Inc. along with various business and civic leaders at the GNO office on Wednesday, the 24th of August. <clears throat> The port this year sponsored uh, a table at the Alvin Bertel Luncheon, which is hosted by the Port of New Orleans. The Bertel Award is given to a, a distinguished maritime uh, member or member in, uh, within the industry who has distinguished himself um, in our region. Uh, uh, with uh, the parish president, uh, a few board members, and the sheriff, that sat at our table, we were there for the, the David Vitter presentation. Senator Vitter has been instrumental with the instituting tougher language in the, in the word of bills over the years. He has been a real fighter for dredging dollars for the Mississippi River, and most importantly, loosening the administration's grip on the dollars in the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund, and ensuring that what they appropriate, they actually, it gets down to where the dredging or maintenance of the locks is being done. <clears throat> on today's agenda, um, I respectfully request that item 6A1 regarding the millage assessment be deferred. The port staff has worked up four courses of action, and we feel that we need to present those to the port committee prior to presenting them to the full board. So, Mr. Chairman, if uh, you could um, defer that item. Uh, second, there's a resolution directing the port chairman to enter into an employment contract with me as the executive director of Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District. And lastly, there is a resolution authorizing me as the executive director to extend the current agreement with Arlington Ridge Group, LLC, for consulting services. This is with Larry Lynott. I did mention to Larry that the parish was interested in conversing with him regarding their contract and somehow piggybacking on the, on the port. And as I stated in the port committee meeting, uh, he suggested someone from the parish give him a call. Mr. Chairman, uh, subject to your questions or questions of the board, this concludes my brief. Does anybody from the table have any questions? Mr. Sanders? Anyone from the audience? Okay, therefore, we'll move to uh, item four, bids and advertisements. Um, do we have any? None. We'll move to item five, introductions, ordinances, and resolutions. Mr. Bethalem? No. I have four. A resolution authorizing the Blackman's Parish, Port Harbor Terminal District, Blackman's Port to dispose of disused movable property, specifically to dispose of a 55-plus old port barge B11 on an as-is, where-is basis in accordance with the Louisiana statutes governing the disposable of movable property owned by a political subdivision of the state and otherwise to provide with respect there too. A resolution authorizing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District Plaquemines Port to dispose of the shoes movable property, specifically to dispose of a 2005 Dodge 2500 pickup truck on an as-is, whereas basis and in accordance with Louisiana statutes governing the disposal of movable property owned by a political subdivision of the state and otherwise to provide with respect there too. A resolution authorizing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District Administration to exceed the cap established for professional services with Dwight Cambry and Suffering for legal services and otherwise to provide with respect there too. An ordinance to amend the 2016 
Plaquemines Port Harbor Terminal District operating expenditure budget and revenue budget and appropriate funds from the land purchase fund to be used at the ports required 25 percent match and otherwise to provide with respect there too. Uh, I apologize I didn't put my name on the top of it, Kim, so you can just, thanks. Mr. June, Mr. Juno? I have none. Mr. Russo? Mr. Lapine? I have none. Bert? Yes, I have two. A resolution authorizing the executive director of the port to advertise for a request for a proposal and or to award in contract with, with contractors as provided by Louisiana law for removal and installation of appropriately sized culverts as determined necessary with the assistance and guidance of, of the Plaquemines Parish Engineering Department in ditches and canals located on port property and adjacent properties where port property drainage is impacted and for the services of cleaning, sweeping, removing, hauling and disposal of debris from any safe ditches and canals and otherwise to provide with respect there too. And the second one reads, an ordinance to appropriate funds for the port land purchase funds to be from the port land purchase funds to be used for the removal and installation of appropriately sized culverts as determined necessary with the assistance and guidance of the Plaquemines Parish Engineering Department in ditches and canals located on the port property and adjacent properties where port property drainage is impacted and for the services of cleaning, sweeping, removal, the hauling and disposal of debris from said ditches and canals and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. And that's it for me. Mr. Edgecombe? I have none, sir. Ms. Williams? I have none. Okay, move to item six. Um, we will defer 6A1 at the request of the executive director. And we will move to 6B. A resolution authorizing and directing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District Chairman, Port Chairman, to enter into an employment contract with Major General S Maynard Sandy Sanders for services as Port Executive Director by signing the employment contract to enter into said contract for a term of three years, authorizing and directing the Port Chairman to sign the documents to enter into the contract by the close of business on August 3, 2016, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Thank you, I'll offer. Ask for a second. Second by Mr. Lapine. Uh, this is for the, the contract renewal for Mr. Sanders. Um, I will pass around the contract. I'm not sure if everybody has a copy of it. If you have an extra copy. Um, Basically, what this is, his contract is up uh, next month, and we need to get a new contract in place. Um, there's a lot of things going on with the port, as you all know. We've made some amendments to this contract to try to bring it up to par regionally. Um, with the edits that we've made, it still really doesn't compare regionally with, uh, with other port positions, uh, director positions. I'll tell you exactly what we've, we've added to this contract. Um, his current salary now is $183,750, which I think the regional average is a little over, I think, two sixty-five. dollars uh, This doesn't include uh, benefits. This is just base salary. Um, we would like to keep his salary the same. There is one addition, or well, two additions. The first addition would be uh, a 3% annual COLA increase, which would take effect, the first one would take effect on September of 2017, and then happen the next two years afterwards. The third one would be a 40% increase in salary only at the time of, or if, there is a uh, execute a lease agreement with Venture Global, which is a project that that uh, the port and Mr. Sanders has been working on. Um, if that agreement does happen and that forty percent increase is instituted in the salary, then he would not receive any more 
uh, COLA increases of 3%. So basically the salary stay, stays the same as it is. Uh, if he doesn't get the, this, this major deal done, um, he doesn't get a raise. Uh, he'll get a, a 3% COLA raise in 2017 of September, um, but that would be the only raise. Um, I'll open it up to the table for any, any questions, comments. I would just make one comment. Um, we, we did uh, have the contract review by our council attorney uh, who worked uh, with the uh, port attorney, and uh, that's where a lot of the new language did come from. So uh, we did do our due diligence, um, and I'll just you know open it up if anybody has any questions after that. My, my one question at this moment would be, why are we doing a three-year contract when normally all contracts that's, that's usually negotiated with the parish is, is a two-year contract. Yes, ma'am. I'll let uh, our council attorney, Mr. Danny Garrett, answer that question as far as the, the two-year versus three-year contract. And it's legalese. Yeah, the, um, well, that was the proposal for the three-year was in the original proposal uh, that came from Mr. Sanders. Um, the provision in the charter with regard to service contracts two years have to do with contract for services with the parish the Port and Harbor uh, district is a separate political subdivision so that provision I don't think applies um, but certainly it's up to the discretion of the governing authority of the port which the council serves as uh, to decide to include that to approve that term or not it's like any other negotiable term in the contract so basically it is uh, legal for us to do a three-year contract correct Correct. Any other questions from the from the table, Mr. Russo? Just want to make my comments known. Um, I, I reviewed the study and I saw where the, the medium salary was two hundred twenty-two thousand and the average salary was two thirty-four and the low salary was ninety-four and the high was three sixty-five. Uh, my uh, wrestle with this is not with the renewal of the contract. And without being long-winded, I prepared a little statement that I will spread across the minutes. And it's uh, after review of the proposed port director's contract up for renewal today, I do not see myself being able to vote for the proposal. I realize that the votes are there to uh, approve the contract, and I, I wish uh, that it works out. But uh, I made my position known previously to the presentation of the contract throughout the last few weeks. I support the renewal of the contract without the Section 3 paragraph D providing a salary increase to equal 140 percent of the salary. The salary could potentially increase after the first year to $257,250 plus benefits or in the third year to $264,969 plus benefits making the employment package approach $300,000. I support the Port Director and his efforts and could vote for the renewal with the 3% annual increase. The heartburn that I have is with the financial condition of the other employees in the parish, the other 600 that will view this as being something out of the ordinary and special treatment, and therefore uh, I will not support the renewal as long as that section is in there. Thank you. Anyone else from the table before I open up to the audience? Solid. <coughs> I kind of share some of those those statements, not all of the, the comments that Mr. Roussel have, have just given. But uh, in a previous port committee meeting, I mean, I, I, I think I was pretty pretty uh, clear on my position of, and the support that I have for Mr. Mr. Sanders. Uh, and my position is still that I, I have all of the respect and respect for him, and I think he's doing an excellent job. In, in the capacity that he's been given. I, uh, but uh, again, my position is wrestling with myself of the appearance that goes out to the public. We're in the midst of a, of a, a, a layoff, and in my opinion, an unfair layoff. And to send that message out there, because whether or not whatever side of the argument you on if you want to see the port as a separate entity apart from the government 
you know, I think we have those different opinions out there, but my feelings is that the port is a part of the government and is un under one umbrella, even though there's legislation that, that says that they're somewhat operating apart from the government. And to have that message out that this a substantial raise is being given and then others are losing their jobs, it's just a, something that I, I'm, I'm wrestling with personally. So uh, I, too, cannot support this, this legislation in its, in its form, and it has nothing to do with my, my opinion of, of Mr. Mr., uh, Mr. Sanders' performance as, as our port director. And I'll yield the floor. Mr. Chairman? Um, I think Mr. Lapine, okay. then I'll get to you, Mr. Padon. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A few years ago, when the Port Committee set out to find the best possible candidate for the port, it was a nationwide search. And those people on the committee, I'd like to give kudos to uh, past council member, Councilman Gooey, Councilman Marinovich, Councilman Buras. We went nationwide to find the best person to run our port. And we did. We did. We found Mr. Sandy Sanders. And the old additive, you get what you pay for. So I have been pleased of working with Mr. Sanders. He is a visionary for the future. He is, he is a man of yesterday, a leader for today, and a visionary for the future. And I stand by you, Mr. Sanders, and I'm proud to say that you're our port director. Thank you. Mr. Bartholomew. I don't have a problem with Mr. Sanders' performance as a director. He's been on top of it, he's been aggressive, and he's been very very challenging to the different people in D.C. and the state as well to get things done in Plaquemine Parish. That's not my concern. My concern is the increase. And I have been called by several people in my district concerning that. And that's the, the things that I cannot support at this time. But I'm not saying I can't support it later, but at this time I cannot because we're laying off so many people in, this, in districts throughout the parish and we just begun. And that's some of the issues that have confronted me and the, I owe my allegiance not only to this government, but all allegiance to the people that I represent. And that's where I'm at at this point in time. Mr. Juno? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Sanders has done a great job. I'm very happy what he's doing. I'm friends with him. I think he's done a great job. But I've had constituents calling me saying we're laying people off and why should we give people an increase? And he's not getting an increase in pay, but he's getting an incentive. And I cannot vote for this contract until we drop that incentive. And then also, until I see the price pollen driven. Yeah, I'll just add uh, one quick thing. I uh, kind of piggyback on what Mr. Lapine said. I mean, you get what you pay for. Um, I want to make it clear that this does not affect parishes uh, general fund budget at all um, this is something totally separate it comes from the ports budget uh, as you have seen before the ports budget is is very healthy there's a lot of things going on um, it was up to me I would have tried to raise the president's salary before the qualifying so we can get good qualified people in. I mean that's that's how you get folks in but you pay them what they need to be paid to, to keep them around I think we have a long way to go with this port um, and I'll be supporting you, Mr. Sanders, in this contract. I'll now open it up to to the floor. Um, we won't do anything in order. Just uh, I will ask you to limit all comments to five minutes. So each individual will have five minutes to speak. Uh, whether you're for or against, uh, it doesn't matter. But if you just want to follow line behind the, the podium or, or come on up, just announce your name uh, and your address as well. Thank you. If I may. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I'm Robert Bach. I'm the president of the 
Rio Grande Pacific Corporation. We own and operate the New Orleans and Gulf Coast Railway. I come here to speak in behalf of and support for the renewal of the contract for General Sanders. Um, as I think most of you know, the NOGC is an artery of commerce in this parish, and we look to invest more in this parish to help its tax base grow, to help jobs grow, and the port development is key to that. It's absolute key to that. I hear from the board today, you understand the importance of the port development, and I welcome that. Um, my observation, having worked with General Sanders the last three years and seen what I have that has taken place, is that he is central to making this happen, if it is to happen. Uh, I've seen him in operation, working with others. I've worked with him. He has the vision, as you've already noted, to make this happen. That vision is an extraordinary product that this parish can have. Just as important, he has a plan to make it happen. And the investors, people like Venture Global, they're recognizing that. And they would not be here but for him. If this port development is to be made a reality this decade, in my view, he needs to lead it. He has the credibility of the investment community. And this is a competitive marketplace out there, believe me. You know, I, I have been in touch with other ports who have contacted me ab about rail opportunities there. It's a very competitive marketplace. And if you don't have the leadership, the opportunity that you have here will go elsewhere along the Gulf, whether it's Texas, whether it's Florida, whether it's Mississippi or Alabama. There is competition out there. And I hear the anxiety that many of you have raised over the incentive that he has in his contract. This is the first time I'm aware of that. Keep in mind that this is a business, and that's why I mentioned the competition out there with other ports. It is a business. You need to make a marketplace and business decision. Uh, General Sanders is the man to make this happen. I urge you to support his contract renewal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buck. Mr. McCarthy. I was asked to come up here probably about six years ago to go ahead and put together a container port of Plaquemine Parish. I ran into a difficulty with Pabby. And what happened was they had a meeting where Dr. Gooey and the head of the New Orleans and Gulf Coast Railroad talked about how they were going to build this great container port on the west bank of the river. I've only been 60 years in the business, so maybe I know a little bit about it. One thing that you need for a port is a railroad. This man, as late as July the 21st, he went before Pabby also. But just to go back a little bit, because I made this meeting with Pabby, and they said they were going to build this great port on the west bank of the river, I ran into a conflict with Dr. Gooey. And I was told at any time I wanted to go ahead and make a statement. I had to give him a written statement. And if I did not agree, I mean, if I did not go along with the written statement, I would not, I'd be ruled out of order. Uh, happy that I have a good counsel with me now. As late as July the 21st, he went before another Pabby meeting. It's talking about uh, an intermodal, intermodal that he's going to bring to the West Bank. 
believe me, it's impossible. You have to have railroads. There's 75% of your freight coming in or being exported is handled by railroads, and they don't have any railroads on the West Bank. Yes, they do have a switching line, but that adds costs. And that switching line can only bring it to another switching line. And that adds costs. And then John Pennison had a favorite story about how it took the New Orleans Public Belt Railroad 10 days to deliver a car on the other side of the river. Well, I knew if that car would have been mine, within two or three days when I never seen it, I'd be calling up on the telephone. I wouldn't be blaming the New Orleans Public Belt. They probably put it on the track and forgot that it was there. But that's the kind of management that we had. We had a good man, a man that was born in Plaquemine Parish that was doing the port management. And because he wasn't politically aligned, he was fired. I went and I had a cup of coffee with Bob Thomas. And he said, it's been eight months that this man Sanders is on a job and every time I go down to his office, he's sitting there drinking coffee. Well, to be honest with you, I found out the next day he that he does, doesn't know anything about ports. He admitted that same thing in front of a PABI meeting at Boomtown when he was asked. You can go ahead and spend a lot of money. But let me bring up Amos Cormier. He called me one morning and he said, Mickey, he said, I never had time to call you last night. He says, I'm waiting in line here for the Vice President of the United States. And I said, Amos, when he comes up to you, grab his hand and hold it. and tell him, Mr. Vice President, we have somebody working on a port deal that means a lot to the people of Central America, a major uh, trading partner. I don't want to do any business with China. Got about one minute, Mr. McCarthy. There we go. OK. <laughs> But I apologize. I'm giving everybody five I minutes. Appreciate I appreciate it. about one minute. I just want to let you know. Appreciate it, Bo. Thank you. That said, when you have, grab his hand and hold it and tell him we have a man that's working with Central America in order to bring this business. There was three major words. So we'll make it public right now. I said, just tell him that that man is a part of the Northern Triangle. The Northern Triangle in 2014, I don't have any newer records, I'm sorry. But in 2014, they handled 2,200,000 cars, containers. I'm hoping to get one fourth of that. If I do, I'll start off with a basic 550,000 containers. Mr. Sanders went before this council and said, I'm making a deal with the Norfolk Southern Railroad and I'm going to invite Mr. McCarthy to the deal. I waited a couple of months. The Norfolk Southern Railroad realizes what it has. And they called me and they asked me if I could meet them for a luncheon. All right, Mr. McCarthy. In Chalmette. And I brought two of my men. And Mr. Sanders wasn't there. I appreciate it's it. Up. But I tell you what, I'll do this job for $1 a year. And I'll give you a better job than him. Right. I appreciate it. Want to come up? Uh, Mr. Thomas. 
Major, you good. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for allowing me to um, speak to you today. Uh, I appear before you today um, as a resident of good standing in Plaquemines Parish. I'm a retired veteran of 24 years of honorable service. I'm a disabled veteran. I'm a business owner um, in a business uh, or in New Orleans that will be opening in about 45 days. I'm a talk show host of the Watchtower Hour, which is on WBOK 1230 AM, where we voters inspect what we inspect of our elected officials. And we talk about it so that we are more informed as we go into um, our election seasons. I'm also a wife, and I'm a mother. But for today, most importantly, I stand before you as the friend of retired Major General Sandy Sanders, who's, who I served under uh, as he was the commander back then, a full bird colonel of the 1192nd Terminal Transportation Terminal Brigade based here in New Orleans. We served together during Operation Enduring and in and Iraqi freedom during the years of 2002 and 2004. And I was his, one of his logistics officers. I speak to you today because I feel responsible for much of this debate. Um, it was I who reached out to General Sanders and invited him to apply for this position when I first heard we were finally moving forward to build our long-awaited port over three years ago. Imagine my excitement to learn that one of the strategic, the, one of the most strategic and operational minds in port operations was coming to our great parish to build the next new port to bring our parish into the international port industry of our time. I was extremely confident knowing that a graduate of one of our country's best military schools who produces the best minds in military, strategic, operational planning, social, financial, business uh, professions, those leaders of this country, and we were able to get one of them out of West Point. I was very confident in his abilities. And he does know a lot about ship loading, ship offloading, both in the national and international uh, arena. So I come to you today as I have for the past 45 days when I became aware that this debate was ongoing to speak in support of bringing Mr. Sanders' pay to the commensurate level of his peers across the country. Commensurate level of his peers across the country. The financials show the port can't afford it. The industry reports indicate that we, what he's asking is reasonable and beyond fair. I look to you council members to make your decision based on the data and on Mr. Sanders' performance. This is not political, so please do not insert politics in this. I hold each of you accountable as a voter, as a resident of this parish for your decision. And finally, I'd like to leave you with the Facebook post that I made to my nearly 4,000 followers, and there are thousands of followers, many of whom are voters in this parish. I did this just an hour before arriving here, and I look forward to giving them the results of your decision. The, the post follows. Here's an example of how to lose my vote. I see zero wrong with paying quality people to do a great job. I support the contract renewal for our port director, Menard Sanders, in Plaquemines Parish. From the reports I've received, opposing council members will vote against the increase in salary because the parish is broke. The parish is broke. Yet reports indicate the revenue generated from the port is not public funds at all. The work is, of this port is, that he is doing 
is not owned nor controlled by the parish government. So why deny him standard pay for a job well done? I am interested in the outcome of this vote, and I will weigh in, as I hope most other voters do, this upcoming election season, folks. It's about principles. If you can't separate issues and make decisions based on the merits of a case, on a case-by-case -case basis, and in, then in my view, you don't need to represent my interests as my elected official. I'm signing off now as Major Tracy Riley retired and saying, use your critical thinking, use your critical thinking skills, or you will lose my vote. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Major, for your comments, and once again, I appreciate your service to our country. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, members of the court board, I'm here today to read a letter on behalf of Poppy Chairman Rob Hopkins, who apologizes for not attending today because of a minor procedure. He's doing fine, but uh, he apologizes. He's not here himself to read the letter, so if I may. The Plaquemines Association of Business and Industry strongly supports the Parish Council Port Authority approving the contract to continue the employment of Mr. Sanders as Executive Director of the Port. Sanders has aggressively pursued projects which will greatly benefit the Port, the Parish, and the citizens. The Venture Global LNG project alone stands to generate $20 million in rental income to the Port annually and when fully developed beyond his 10-year industrial exemption, $71 million in Avalorum taxes. We understand Sanders is working on advanced payments, which will generate tax revenues even sooner than 10 years. When Sanders was first hired, the port did not own any property, and there were no projects on the horizon. We now own 600 acres of prime property under contract for, two, for a $2 billion project, with many other leads being developed. He has operated the port under budget. He has maintained a loyal, stable workforce. He has lived up to his commitment to the business community to make advance payments on the three mill tax we supported. He has worked on improving levy projects. He has crafted a 20-year plan for development of the port and has agreed to move the economic development department under the port, removing that financial burden from the parish during tough economic times. He has aggressively supported the deepening of Baptiste Colette, the Peters Road bypass, and the relocation of the railroad out of Bell Chase, all projects vital to our future success and supported by Pobby for the last 12 years. At our June Pobby membership meeting, Tim Osborne, NOAA's navigation manager, was our guest speaker. Osborne spoke of the importance of Plaquemines Parish based on our connection to the world through our port. You are the gateway to the world and the world's largest complex of ports, he said. To Pabi, that means we should not take the port for granted. We should work to maximize its potential, and that means keeping strong leadership in place. We understand Sanders has agreed to a continuation of his, of his existing compensation far below industry standards until a time when VG, the VG project moves forward At that time, he is requesting an increase to bring his compensation closer to industry standards. While no one is irreplaceable, we believe we are at a crossroads into bringing a more diversified economy to Plaquemines Parish, and Sanders is a key component. We need him fully engaged for another three years and beyond to continue developing our port and parish. If we want our port to be world class and derive the benefits that brings, we have to be willing to have a leader who is comfortable working on the world stage and should be compensated him accordingly. With kindness regards, Robert Hopkins, Chair of PAB. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Close enough. Good afternoon. My name is Sal Latrico. I'm with a company called American Patriot Holdings, LLC. We've been engaged uh, under an NDA with the port since uh, April 2015. Uh, APH's role is to provide a unique inland container on vessel solution 
uh, for the container project uh, and provide completely uh, competitive uh, and add value to the project. Uh, APH, our company, we're not consultants. We don't provide consulting services. We've never been paid by the port for anything. Uh, anything that we have done as far as designing our vessel or any services or any costs have been all on our own nickel, any capital, any design features that we've provided on our own. Uh, we're a private company. There's two primary principal owners, three principal key folks in the company. We, owe, we have over 120 years of operating and management experience in the company. Uh, we've invested, like I said, all of our own money. Uh, and we'll continue to do so as long as this project is a viable project. This container project is a comprehensive project. It's massive in scope. Uh, we've elected to align ourselves with this project. Um, and you have to think about why. I mean, uh, it's a strategic location. It makes sense. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity for growth. There's great people in this region. There's good leadership. We wouldn't be here right now if we didn't think there was good leadership. There's a good project team. We also believe we add value to this project. We just recently met with a majority of the council members. We were pretty sincere and, and told you what, I, what we believed our priorities were for the project and what we think we needed to be successful to move forward. We shared that with you. We also believe we add value to this project. Any good project, massive of scope and size of this, needs continuity to be successful. This project is pretty close of getting to start to bear some fruit. There's some hard work ahead of us. Uh, there's a few things that need to happen, uh, and uh, we're pretty close to achieving that. But it really, the next couple of months here need to really happen to, to be able to do that. But we're pretty close to having some, some bearing some fruit and having some success. So we're here in support of uh, General Sanders, and I think uh, in our meetings with you, we uh, expressed uh, our sincerity again towards this project and our support of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Henry? Yes. I have no problem with the colonel. I have a problem that, you know, we have a little problem. The business people came. And I, I'm with them. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, like I've always said, and you can put it, any kind of spin you want to put on it, all we see is a sign of, over there. At the end of the day, you know, the vision is fine. Show me the money. Show me the money. Put some pounds in the ground. Put something there. You know, I, I just can't comprehend that we as a people the business people always got something up their sleeve with everything. <laughs> they got an interest in it. But what the people getting out of this deal? Where are the people? Government supposed to be for the people. Where are the people getting out of this deal? You have everybody from business people coming up there speaking. But you got people getting laid off. And then they say that's not nothing directly affect that. The port is by the private private government. <laughs> It could be a separate entity, but it still falls under the umbrella of the platinum parish government. Mr. Con the Colonel's salary, I have no problem with his salary, but I have a problem with the incentives. I have a big problem with the incentives. People are getting laid off, but we, but we can afford to give people more money while people are getting laid off. But you're supposed to be representing government, the people. Not business too, but people for more, whole lot more. We we, we got to stop this. We, we got to stop this, people. You know, uh, Bacardo, I love him. I have no problem with it, not at all. But hey, are we are we having the promises and projects? The last guy up here got a project, but hey. Show us the money. Then you're going to claim, oh, you're going to bring in a lot of jobs for the people. But guess what? If you live in Bell Shades, you see all the people who got jobs. They're going out of Bell Shades. So that notion where it's going to bring jobs and we're going to help the people, 
Don't help the people in the parish. Helping everybody everywhere else. You know, we, we, we got to stop this. You know, we got to be real about this. You know, if you want to represent government, you ran for the job. I, I, I think we need to take a good look and start doing our homework on some of these matters. You know, I, I said this from the beginning. You know, we got to start doing our homework. You know, if, if you go truly represent people, or represent people, not special interests, you know, represent the people. We really, really got to look at this thing, man. Uh, a vision is fine. A vision is fine. But we are just taking the people's money and spending it like it's water. We have to stop that. You know, I read in the paper the other day, we grossly, grossly spent money on something. Well, guess what? If anybody, anybody look at this from a real objective point of view, we are grossly spending money. Because when these projects come to fruition, I have no problem paying whatever, whatever this guy wants. Hey, I just don't see it. And, I, and I, I'm going to say it now, and I'm always going to say it. When I see it, I'm going to take my hat off to him. But until that point, we got to. Corey Tell spending some of this money, man. We got to, for the people's sake, for the people's sake, we got to do it. Yes, my name's Warren Lawrence, 120 Timber Canal Lane, Myrtle Grove. First of all, I'm here today, and I'm here on mixed feelings. One, I understand y'all wear two hats, one being as a port board and one being as the board of the parish to govern the public employees, but the other public employees in that other hat, you govern different. But need to be the case. I had questions, and I guess we can't ask questions so you can comment on it, but I will ask a question, is that we are talking about renewal of a contract of the executive director. And are there any other contracts coming up between the deputy director and anyone else on this board? This is a team effort. Will they get 40% also when their contract comes up? You know, we're looking at a situation of one person, and he did everything, and I admire him. He's a great salesman. That's what he is, a salesman. This port ran before he was here. They came in here with the refinery, the coal terminals, the grain elevators, and everything throughout this parish was created by the parish and by the Mississippi River being a great place to do business and it was beneficial to the country, beneficial to every company that came in here. That's what sold it, not one individual. These companies come in because they can do better here. Everything is there, the resources are there. That is why they come. If you think it's one person, then you're crazy. But I'm telling you is that if this part of the team is going to get a 40% increase. What happens with the rest of the team? We talk about who did this, who purchased the land, who put this plan into effect. We paid $500,000 to try that before you ever heard the name Sanders. This was done by the parish. You spent money and paid for a study. Yes, who is enforcing that study? What I'm saying is that, yes, I think he should continue as a court director. But until I find out who else on this team is going to be rewarded, because just for the contract with the Global Venture coming in, Global Venture is not taking all the property. And I'm saying you want to give him incentive? When if, it, if it increases revenue to the parish, give him 25% of the uh, revenue that's increased to the parish. Don't give him 40% the day they sign. Let the money flow and then give that whole team 
a percentage of that return to the parish. If they don't bring in money, they don't get the raise. And I think that's just a little common sense to it. I think that this port has done great. If Mr. God forbid, but if he dropped dead today, this port would go on. And I would ask every one of you, who would you replace him in today's environment? Thank you. Uh, members of the council, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, my name is George Pidach. I'm here on behalf of the Venice Port Coalition. The Venice Port Coalition is a nonprofit made up of approximately 30 businesses located in the Venice area. Uh, the mission statement I'd like to read to you, the Venice Port Coalition, if you haven't been introduced to it before, and I have a letter I'd like to read to you from our chairman of the Venice Port Coalition, Mr. Gerald Annette. Our mission statement. The Venice Port Coalition was organized for coordinating and improving utilities and infrastructure for Tidewater Road, Louisiana State Highway 23, Marina Road, Jump Basin Road, and the enlargement and maintenance of navigational waterways, including but not limited to Baptiste Colette, Tiger Pass, Grand Pass, Mississippi River, and South Pass from Venice, Louisiana to the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the letter from Mr. Danette, the chairman of the Venice Port Coalition. Dear council members, the Venice Port Coalition is in favor of and recommends the Parish Port Authority to renew its contract for the continued employment of General Sandy Sanders as Executive Director of the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District. General Sanders has worked closely with members of the coalition in securing the approval of the Assistant Secretary of the Army for the Baptist Collect Deepening Project and has provided innovative ideas to secure funding through a combination of using dredge material from navigational projects for coastal restoration projects in and around Plaquemines Parish. General Sanders' LA-23 plan exhibits his creativity and forward thinking of a path to develop Plaquemines Parish ports to their fullest potential. General Sanders has an excellent grasp of what is needed to position South Plaquemines, the Venice Port Complex, and the Mississippi River for the anticipated energy development of the Eastern Gulf. We understand that General Sanders' proposed contract provides for an annual salary well below industry standards of a comparable position of a comparable port within the United States. We further understand that the proposed contract provides for a kicker in the event that the Venture Global Project moves forward. We believe such an incentive provision in this contract is an appropriate way to retain and encourage talent such as General Sanders. We thank you for your consideration. Very truly yours, Gerald Demet, Chairman, Venice Port Coalition. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry, Mr. McCarthy. Anyone else? Anyone from the table? Mr. Russo? You hear me? Okay. A lot has been said here, and I don't want anybody to think that anybody is impugning uh, Mr. Sanders' character or ability or job performance. That's not what this is about. Uh, we're in a situation to where we are today agreeing to increase a salary, a substantial amount, uh, prior to something happening, which is premature in my mind. Why would we want to sit here and raise these red flags and send these signals to all of the rest of the employees in the parish uh, that we are doing this in times of uh, layoffs and uh, problems that we are facing financially? Uh, it's my understanding that Venture Global probably will not get a permit for maybe a year. Uh, they may not be able to execute it for a year. So we're so far ahead of ourselves with this document that it makes no sense to me. Because if he doesn't get the increase until they sign and execute the lease, then why not wait until they do and come back to the table and reward him at that time? But to do it today sends out a terrible signal to the rest of the workforce. Uh, I look at the, the port employees, and I, I look at the people that sit in those offices, and I saw them 20 years ago sitting there still making in the 20s. Now, that is also part of the backbone of the port. You know, the restructuring in the last few years has been top-heavy, extremely top-heavy. 
when the worker bees in the offices sit there and have to document and bill all of these shippers who we collect the tariffs from. So I think the port needs a, a, a review, but at this time, to be able to step forward, I have to stick to my statement about uh, premature and doing it at this time. So it's nothing about his character or his ability. I like him. We get into headbutts and we clash sometimes, but he's a good guy. He works hard and he's got a vision and he is, you know, someone that I believe should lead this port forward. It's the timing of the event that has me troubled. Thank you. Anyone else from the table? If not, we'll call for a vote. Roll call, please. Mr. Bethalme, ask for a roll call. Councilmember Bartholomew? Present, not voting. Councilmember Black? Yes. Councilmember Lapine? Yes. Councilmember Gino? No. Councilmember Roussel? No. Councilmember Burt? Yes. Councilmember Trufant Salvant? No. Councilmember Edgecombe? Yes. And Councilmember Williams? Yes. Can you read back? Uh, the ordinance passes five to three and one present but not voting. All right, with that, we'll move to item 6C. A resolution authorizing Maynard Sandy Sanders as executive director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to extend the agreement with Arlington Ridge Group LLC for consulting and advisory services regarding inter alia governmental government representation at the state and federal level and otherwise provide with respect thereto i'll offer second do we have any comments from the uh from the table my comment is that uh, i'm curious to know we've had two contracts with this group you know for the last year and a half i've been asking that we go to one contract uh, as the administration looked at renewing the contract from the council side when I know that the port has the funding to be able to afford it on their side and if not if the comments that were made in the uh, the opening report uh, should be taken seriously and talked to Arlington to be able to see if we can piggyback on that contract I, mean, I know that's been discussed um, we discussed it at the port committee hearing I'm not sure if anyone followed up with that or if the administration has gotten back uh, to the port. It, it, it wasn't brought back up to me. I'm not sure if it was brought back to you guys or, or maybe if uh, Mr. Terrio uh, can answer. Uh, I'll Mr. go ahead. Mr. Lyonet, when I had mentioned it to him, he said, have someone call me. So that would well, be I'm asking the administration at this time to take yes, note sir. of that and call him. Yeah. Yeah, we'd be well and go along with it also, yes. All right. Thank you. Well, I guess I, I'll go to the floor, ma'am. Thank you. I just have a question. You guys kind of moved really fast um, before I could get up here. Regarding the vote that was just taken, um, and it, this is directed to uh, Council Member Bartholomew, yeah, could I you please give us an explanation yeah, of why? Yeah, ma'am, I can't, I can't allow any questions regarding that, that particular uh, or resolution okay. at this time we have already closed it out so okay moving forward so I know procedurally how to um, conduct myself as a citizen here um, when there is a question for an obvious uh, situation how are the citizens to get a question answered as it's happening in time I'm not sure I'm following uh, so we can use this example and he doesn't have to respond because you've already said that it's out of order. Right. Yeah, I'm just, so, I'm, I'm allowing you to, to ask the question based on a procedural question, but. So it is procedural. When a council member is present and chooses not to vote on an item, yeah. how can the constituents the constituent, get a, re a reason Yeah, I understand your question now. You, I mean, the council member uh, has that authority and he's able to exercise it if he chooses to and doesn't have to provide in public um, an explanation now 
whether he should or not, that's something that correct is not. I, I can't really discuss, but uh, okay. I, I, would, I would say any questions to any particular council member should be taken up with that particular council member at another venue. Okay, and just so um, the constituents know what the procedures are. Could you please refer us to the appropriate document that spells all of these rules out so that we're better informed? And yes, I'll have our council attorney speak to you after uh, and, and be able to provide, provide that to you, right? Okay, and who is that? Uh, Mr. Danny Garrett. And or Mr. Ken Rathburn as our port attorney. That first per person's name, please. Uh, Danny Garrett is the council attorney. If you have any council related questions, the council as a whole, if you procedure. have any port-related questions, you can ask Mr. Ken Rathburn, who's the port attorney. And procedure-related questions? Yeah, those, those are the two uh, attorneys. Oh, Mr. Russo? Procedurally, we operate under Mason's Rules of Order, and we have council rules that can be obtained from the secretary. That's the procedure that we follow. Macy's Rule of Order. Mason's Rule of Order, yes. Okay. Mason's. Um, and just so you know, from a constituent's point of view, um, the speed in which this action just took place did not give um, at least this constituent an opportunity, and I just am saying this for the record, to respond or at least ask a question procedure-wise. Thank you. All right, we'll uh, continue on with, with item C. Um, it's, it's a $2,500 a month contract. Uh, Either way, the general senators want to take the lead and talk it to Arlington, or you want us to take the lead. I mean, I, I would rather to handle both parties. I would, I, you know, I think they've done quite a bit for the port. Um, I'd rather move on this one, and then you know, if they have to do some type of amendment or whatever to include the parish later on. But yeah, I probably won't vote for the parish one if we have the port one. All we need to get those two combined in some way. But do we have any other questions? With no other questions, we'll move to a vote. The item passes. Yeah, Mr. Burt, Mr. Burt was absent. Um, Mr. Mr. Juno voted no, and we have seven yeses. So seven, one, and one absent. Uh, I want to move back to just B real quick, just a, um, a, a housekeeping item. Uh, we, need a, we need to delete items, uh, lines 28 through 33. It's just a duplicate in that. Do we have to go back and reopen it, or can we just? Uh, no, I'll just take care of it. Okay. All it is is basically items 28 and 33 through 33 are identical to the subsequent uh, paragraph. All right, with that, we'll move to item seven, new business. We have none. Item 7A, introduction of resolution where suspension is being sought. We have none. We'll do approval of the 2016 June 23 meeting minutes. Ma'am, I'll offer. Second by Mr. Edgecombe. Machines open. Passes eight zero with approval of minutes. There's no motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, may I General. say something before you adjourn? Yeah, you're gonna pull back the motion, Joe. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, I'd I'd like to thank everyone that came here on my behalf. And equally important, I would I would like to say to the folks that that voted no, I uh, appreciated the dignity and respect that you afforded me. I have to admit, when I got on the ferry, I thought it'd be more fun to stand in a cold shower and rip up $100 bills than to come here today. But um, I, I, I was pleasantly <coughs> honored the way that this was upheld. I, um, 
Mr. Henry. I, I agree. You know, this government is about the people. If you look at the first three words in the preamble of the Constitution, it starts off with we the people. And, and I understand that. And I know, um, just as Mr. Lawrence said, that one person doesn't do all this. And uh, matter of fact, I would like to take this time to introduce the three people that I would be lost without. First, uh, I've, I mentioned Shem Burrell earlier. Shem Burrell Riley, stand up. <laughs> uh, Shem Burrell is our CFO. Uh, she whips people in line. When she comes to my office and I'm missing a receipt for a $5 parking ticket, she gives me the look, and I say, I know, i got to eat it. Uh, she's tough. Uh, and please stay standing. Uh, there's Christy Nielsen. Christy, stand up. Christy is in charge of our administration. And, um, you know, she keeps us all in the swim lane that we need to stay in. And lastly, I would like to recognize John Pennison. Okay. Um, John is the deputy port director, and on a day-to-day -day basis, John is running the port. And these three people right here in front of you are, are the bedrock. Uh, Donald Durr is also here. Is Donald here? Oh, okay. I didn't see you there, Don. Stand up, Donald. Uh, Donald kind of runs the invisible side of the port. All the all the kids who are out on the water, and. Um, we, we belovedly call them the, the river rats, but um, uh, they're out there doing that day-to-day -day operation which uh, allows us to, to collect those tariffs and, and to keep the, the safety and security uh, on the water. So, um, Mr. Lawrence, you're, you're very right. Um, it's not one person who runs this. It's, it's, it stems from them and it goes all the way down to the last person uh, that we hired, uh, a fantastic group. You, um, I didn't, I didn't hire anyone when I came here. I, I worked with the Play-Doh that I inherited. And let me tell you what: these folks have all come together. We realized that we got a shoestring budget. We looked at everything that we were doing. They have streamlined streamline the operation. A good example is um, just our collectibles are at plus 99 percent. And that's the same folks that have been here five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. These are great people. They're the very fabric of the community we live in. I'm very proud of them. And, and these, when we say we the people, these, these are the beginning of we the people right here. Thank you all very much. Um, also, the, the, the people in the audience, I, I'm, this is your port. This is your port. I could not have started this port without y'all. Yes, I had to do a very unpopular thing because I didn't have any money and I knew if I'm going to start the port, I got to buy land. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say we... we we put the millage in. I know it was painful, but we did it. But we got the land. We got a client. It is my intent, after three years, that we're going to stop the collection. I know that helps the parish overall. But uh, and the port is going to eat the remainder of, of the outstanding balance. It's going to be about $900,000. And... Um, and I can't thank y'all enough. Y'all were the ones that started the port. Dr. Gooey told me one time, he said, you know, you're not going to win every battle. But my nature is I, I want to win every battle. I fight, kick, scratch, bite, and I go after every battle. But I, I, I don't win them all. And, you know, sometimes you get your come up, and sometimes it's good that Mr. Henry or Mr. Lawrence can come up and box my ears, or <clears throat> Mr. McCarthy, you know. I know. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it, and I, I never lose sight of the fact 
that this is this is a parish port and the folks that live here is airport and and I'm honored that you extend me I'm, I'm humbled of the the terms but I I work for you and my goal is to build the largest port on the Gulf Coast and just like Mr. Henry said, we, we have a lot of jobs at 5 o'clock get in their car and they, they leave our parish. And one of my community goals is those jobs are right here. And it's, it's refreshing when I call a John Bartholomew or Audrey and I tell them about something. And one of the first questions they ask me is, how many jobs are we talking about? And, and that's what we need to be thinking. That should be our MO. So... Again, I'm, I'm humbled, I'm thankful, I'm grateful, and uh, I, I appreciate the dignity and respect that was afforded to me um, during this, um, this debate, a, a very needed debate. And um, I, uh, I look forward to working with all the board members and all the folks in, in the community. Thank you very much. Thank you for those comments. Um, just procedurally, that was item three. Mr. Edgecombe. You have a motion. <laughs> motion to adjourn, Mr. You have a second. Ms. Williams, have we have we a... adopted the minutes? Yes, we did. Okay. Right. Machine's open. Motion to adjourn passes 8 0 at 220. We're going to take a five minute recess before the uh, regularly scheduled council meeting takes place. Nine. We'll call it to order. The machine is open for roll call. Don't roll call. Let the record reflect there are eight sitting council members. Councilman Burt is absent. We'll dispense with the prayer and pledge allegiance. Before we move to executive session, I'd like to ask my colleagues to go through the agenda for the deferrals or withdrawals. Mr. Bartholomew, do you have any deferrals or with None? Okay, thank you. Mr. Black? Give me a second, please. None. None, thank you. Mr. Juno? Yes, I have uh, 6D. 6G? D. D. Deferred or withdrawn? Deferred. D. Like in dog. Deferred. Okay, thank you. Mr. Russo? None. None. Like 6E will be deferred. Yeah. 6E. Huh? Oh, and Charlie Burt. I'm sorry, what were you Six, and 6A1 will be deferred on Mr. Burt's behalf. 6A1. Ms. Salvant, do you have any? Thank you. Mr. Edgecombe? As of right now, I, have, I might have one with deferral, so I have to check with Mr. Garrett. Okay, thank you. Ms. Williams? I don't have any, sir. Thank you. So go back over them real quickly. 6A1 is deferred today. 6D, as in dog, is deferred. And 6E is deferred. 6D. Hmm? 6D. That's what I said. Okay. D is in dog. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Barber, will you call executive session? 1A. Philip T. Costa versus Plaquemines Parish Government, 25th JDC, case number 50 353, Attorney Shane Landry, Council Member Lapine. Executive session has been offered. I'll ask for a second. Second. Second by Ms. Williams. The machine is open on executive session. And it's six to zero. We will move to executive session at 2.32.
We come out of executive session at 2.50, finding no legal and binding action. We'll move on the agenda to 6A2 real quick. Um, and Ms. Barbara, you could read 6A2 and we'll read 6A2. The, the chance that we may take 6A2 through 6A6 in global, but read 6A2, please. An ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of the property of Woodland Borough Pits, LLC, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, is shown on the map of resubdivision track DR-2A into tracks DR-2A1 and DR-2A2. Property of Woodland Borough Pits, LLC, dearranged plantation by Hugh McCurdy III, PLS, dated January 28, 2016. The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost to Plaquemines Parish government or the parish of Plaquemines and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Ms. Salvan, you're offering with changes? Yes. Okay. I am. Yeah. And the changes have been handed out. And Mr. Chairman, the next five pieces of legislation is all pertaining to the uh, will servitude. Wait, wait. What are the changes first on 682? Uh, did okay. You, oh, that's yes. all of them. A six. No, they're going to. There, there are going to be changes on each each one. Each one. Okay. Okay. All and right. on six eight two, the changes is going to be on line twenty four to twenty five. That entire paragraph is going to be inserted, and it's going to read as whereas the owner slash developer understands and acknowledge that he and all subsequent owners of the property must perpetual, perpetually suffer the servitude of the drainage for the future canal widening and our flood protection projects to be created in tracks DR-282 as the accommodation notes stated on the attached plat of survey. Okay. You offer with those changes? Offer with those changes, yes. I'll second it. And before we do a vote, we have Mr. Yeah, uh, Mr. Hogan, can you Mr. come Mr. Hogan up? is going to come up and explain Thank you very much. Paul Hogan, Woodland Bar Pits. Um, this is the first of, of five resubdivisions that's in front of y'all tonight. Um, what we discussed with this issue applies to all five of uh, the same. Woodland Bar Pit is dividing his property into uh, various portions for uh, placement into various entities. The property has been resubdivided uh, as such to account for uh, the parish's future canal relocation project, future levy, uh, servitudes that are going to be acquired, existing pipeline right away, and future uses. It has been um, revised. There's a plat that goes with DR2 that should be revised uh, to add an access servitude that was required by Mr. Ken uh, Dugas that should be in front of y'all also. Um, The resub, like I said, the resubdivisions are here. If you have any other questions, I'll be glad to ask them, but they're all pretty much identical. I got a question, Mr. Hogan. Just each individual legislation, is it just a different track of land? Yes, each one are different portions, different parcels, okay. different tracks. It's the same canal widening relocation project, but it's just a different track of land, correct? That's correct. Each one of them have either a canal relocation and all levy, future levy uh, servitudes that will be affecting each, each of the properties. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions from the table? I just want a little clarification about the, the road access. Is that on a different plat, you said? On, on DR2, there should be a revised uh, plat that shows a 50-foot access on the uh, upriver end of the property adjacent to that property that has a tower. It's in your current package. It's the plat on your current package. She says it's the plat in the current package. So you package. have it. And so we have, have it. The so secretary, right so when we adopt it, it's the yes. right plat? Yes, it's in your packet today. I don't see it on mine. That's where I'm looking. It's in the original package, not the package that was handed out. 
what she's saying is it, it was revised and it was already put in your original package. It's not in, in what was handed out today. It was already in your original package with the revision. It was submitted Monday in the packet right. Monday that went out. So it's not in our package today, but the secretary yes, has yes. the right one that we're adopting the right one. It should be in your packet today. I submitted it in the laser fish Monday. It's right there on the corner of... 50 foot ingress? And yes, yes, sir. That's it, correct. Now, one other question that I have is that by accepting this uh, subdivision and the perpetual drainage servitude is in the favor of the parish, uh, is that correct? It's, it's not granting a perpetual servitude. It, it's accounting for its layout such that when y'all come and get the canal servitude and the levy servitudes, it will all fall within that track of property that's configured to follow which I will be taking. And that was all coordinated with Blair Rittner. And, uh, and so is it the intention of uh, the company to donate that servitude in favor of the parish to be able to put the canal and the levy in? No, it's not to donate it. You know, it's going to be, y'all going to acquire it through the normal, you know, process when that time comes. It's just being laid out to account for the future acquisition when y'all do acquire it. So this is just to, to carve it out, but not anything to do with the, in favor of the parish or donation or anything? That's correct. Nothing to do with donation. Do you know if the intention is to donate it? Uh, I don't know that. I would doubt it. Uh, you know, that's for my supervisors to make those determinations. But this, this has nothing to do with the acquisition or, yeah. or donations of property. I was just hoping that the, the, the subdivision of the property would benefit the project with the donation being in favor of the parish so we could provide that to the Corps of Engineers so they could move the project forward. But you and know, I can ask that you know, to the owners. It's something that would be separate from this, but I can express that request to them. Because if all this does is to subdivide the property, we still have to go through some action to be able to get that in favor of the parish to provide that to the Corps. Correct. You know, there's one portion on the, on the J track which will be donated. That was due to another agreement that was uh, work, worked out with the parish, but that's a separate issue. But that portion over there, the levy and the canal servitude on that particular property is being donated. And it, does that say that in the subdivision? No, it's already today? done in another. That uh, was in the settlement of the lawsuit? in the settlement, correct. Okay. Anyone else from the table? Audience? Is it Lawrence? Yeah, um, my only question is this truck in, in <coughs> Myrtle Grove, and originally when the alignment of the levees, the drainage system was going to follow the same alignment as the old levee. Now we're going to go across the center of the property, which we will, I don't know how much the citrus land had donated, if there was enough to put the canal where they put the new levee. But now we are creating something through the center of the piece of property, and we question whether or not the, uh, I'm assuming, does the parish now have to buy that right-of-way through there instead of getting the original right-of-way next to the existing levy in the, on the south side of the property? And I'm only speaking of it in the Murder Grove area because that track of land that was donated to the parish by Citrus Land followed the alignment of the existing levy. So the existing canal would have had to be moved further north, right next to the new levy. Now, instead of doing that, now we are moving it all the way into the center of the property, and are we going to have to purchase that land to go through instead of having where we had it donated by Citrus Land? Ms. Mitra, can you answer any of those questions? Because I was under the impression, and apart from, from Mr. Rittner no longer being with us, you know, I was relying on, on the permit department to do the due diligence and all of the research on, the, on these properties. And according to Mr. Hogan, he's saying that this, this is not the actual donation. And I was under the impression that it was the actual donation. So if we're not... Uh, I'm not comfortable with moving forward with any of this, this legislation. I, um, I relied on Mr. Rittner. I sent it out for the review for him to make sure that everything was handled, whether it was the donation or just for a subdivision of the property. Mr. Rittner replied in the email saying that 
um, the subdivision was in match of the alignment of the relocation of the canal. He never elaborated whether it was, you know, uh, an agreement for an act of donation or anything um, that would be handled between, I guess, the land department and the legal department and the um, petitioner. Only thing I do is accept it for the act of uh, subdivision and anything else would be handled through them, whether they um, made it a, a, a servitude, a perpetual servitude, or a permanent servitude. Mr. Hogan? Yeah. As, as Mr. Warren said, you know, the, the canal is being relocated from uh, along the levee in the back is going to be relocated to the center of the property. There's an existing canal there right now, which the parish already has an existing servitude running through there. When the canal, when the uh, parish comes in the future, they're going to be widening that canal, and I think they're going to acquire another, seven, I think it's a 100-foot servitude, if I'm not mistaken, but they're going to acquire another 75 feet or something like that, adjacent to what they have right now in order to widen that canal, to relocate the, the levy that the, the canal is against the existing levy right now, for stability purpose, to make sure that that levy in the back doesn't fail. That's why they're going to fill in that canal and then reroute it down the, the center of the property. But according to your earlier statement, we're going to come, as a council, we're going to have to come back to the table and acquire the act of donation. Yeah, that's the way, is, is the way it's done on all the property, on all the, uh, whether it's your canal relocation or your levy servitudes, the, uh, the, you know, the parish entity has to put out the notice to the, all the property owners. You know, it'll be to us, it'll be to Conoco, it'll be to Merrill Grove, it'll be to uh, everybody that's along that reach. It's, it's just a normal process that's separate well, and apart from the resubdivision yeah. action. Uh, and the reason I'm thinking about this as a normal process, when we accept a subdivision, for instance, we accept the street and the drainage in favor of the parish when the subdivider puts that subdivision together. So I was looking at this subdivision in the same way to be able to say, okay, we're subdividing this property. However, this area along the back is a perpetual servitude in favor of the parish. Seems to me it cuts down a lot of time and effort and potentially funding to have to go back and buy that servitude because today it seems like all we're doing is cutting that piece out right. and now we got to go back and find a way to acquire it. Right. So that's why I was assuming that and proceeding with the uh, uh, idea that it was like a normal subdivision because when you accept Springwood subdivision or any other subdivision, the streets wind up going to the parish in the subdivision. And I would think that would be a simpler way to do it, but there might be reasons why it's not being done that way. Yeah. When, well, uh, you know, this here is simply just a resubdivision of lines. There's no improvement. There's nothing that's changing from what's on the ground right now. You know, that, the particular property, you know, it includes the, the Part of the property is the canal servitude that's going to be acquired of it. Part of it is a pipeline right away. Part of it is just a little extra land on the outside of that. Part of it is going to be what a levy is going to be acquired. So within those pieces that are being subdivided out, all of those items will exist, of which the servitudes are going to be just a portion of it that has to be defined through, you know, surveys and, and uh, uh, information that the Corps is going to provide back. We already know what that information is because that's how we laid it out, using the Corps' information and using the parish's information so that when that time comes, everything jives. And when they submitted the application, they did not uh, submit a servitude agreement, which would have normally been attached to the ordinance to say that they were willing to donate or willing to contribute that portion of land as a servitude. That's why I had not consulted with legal. I just treated it as a separate uh, track that was being divided into some of them two into to four tracts of land. None of them was never said that it was going to be given or donated to but the parish. Let me ask you this, though. For the process, do you agree that that servitude agreement could have been submitted with the subdivision and we would today, after adoption of this, would have the servitude to be able yes, to Yes, so that is the, the normal court. procedure. That would be the normal procedure. This is just a one step. So yes. we're taking baby steps when we could have finished the deal today. So, yes, so, what, so what, are, what is your recommendation as of today? It would be up to the, the property owner. I can't, tell them. <coughs> I can't tell them that they have to submit it as a servitude. They have to be willing 
to give it to the parish or willing to insert that language for legal to look it over and it to be recorded as such. Right. So I understand that the, the, the purpose is to set that track aside, but the question is how do we get it in the favor of the parish? Right. That's going to be the, the, the next question. And, right. and if I might say, that, that was my question. It's not the point of the subdivision being done. It's when the subdivision is then done, are you now in a situation to comply, you're going to have to either buy or have it donated. Correct. Remember, this is on that piece of land. Yes. You're going to address the same situation on Mr. Nungas's land in front of our subdivision. You're going to have to do a resubdivision there, and will he donate it to you, or will you get it? So this is one piece of a puzzle that is being done, not as the whole picture. And my question is, yeah. if, if we buy it from one owner, yeah, this is, they don't own all the property in relation to this drainage system. They are only subdividing their portion. Right. And they're making no commitment that they will give you the land after. Citrus Land already gave us the land. They've already donated where the Corps said they wanted their levees and the drainage canal relocated to. Now, if this is a betterment to the parish to now move that canal to the center, fine. But now, will you have to pay for that betterment? That, that's the question I, I had with Ms. Audrey all along. You know, it's just like the right of servitude to go to the pumping station. There's a road there already. There's water, sewer, and everything. And we're purchasing land to go back to it again. Or we, I don't know if we did or not. Mr. Hogan, uh, did the parish ask you to do this subdivision, or did y'all decide to do this on your own? And we decided to do this on our own because the company is uh, going to be putting their properties into different ownership. They're sp splitting up woodland bar pits. Or they're going to keep woodland bar pits, which is going to keep the property where the pits are actually located. The rest of the property is being subdivided into, it's being uh, put into ownership of two different companies. But, but my question would be, would, why would we want to move forward with uh, subdividing the property and without any, any assurance of how it's going to benefit us in the, in the long run? So, you, you know, I'm, I'm leaning toward well, deferring, deferring well, these... these, these uh, well, uh, we'd rather you not do that. But, you know, the question is whether this happens tonight or not, I mean, today, is whether the owners want to want to donate in the future. Yeah, and, and That's the only question here. So right. the restart division action has no bearing on whether they're going to donate in the future or not. Right. That is something I can, can bring to them and ask, but we would ask that y'all approve this because it really has no bearing on that aspect when the time comes. Well, the, the, the reason we say that is because we've been told for the last year and a half that this was going to be donated to that's, the project. That's, well, like I said, that, that is the case by the South Pit. No, the, no we were told no. that all of this canal new loc relocation was going to be donated to the parish except for the one individual that was mentioned earlier Bill he was going to require us to purchase it because he changed his mind last january or january before last so we've been operating under the assumption that this was going to be a no-brainer and we go ahead and accept their servitude and we could move forward well, you know, and I, I know I, for I, a I, fact I, that's the way i've been operating i thought it all was going to be a donation except for billy nungas's property you know, i, I don't know that to be the case question. but if that is a commitment that they made then they will stand by that commitment i just don't have personal knowledge of it whatever it is it is if they yeah. agree that to y'all when the time comes they will you know they'll do it if that's what they you know the commitment they made to y'all i can assure you Right. My, my disappointment is that it, we're not doing it all in one swift move, <laughs> you right. know. Ms. Alvin? I would like to ask a question that sort of like pertains to it. Uh, the taxpayers bought 550 acres in B3 from Citrus, and that is the land that was used to go to Global Venture. But all of a sudden it grew. We leased 682 acres to uh, Global Venture. Is that money that was, I mean, is that land that was given by uh, Citrus Land? Because that's where it came from. Where did we get the 132 acres? I don't see any resolution on it. You're asking me that question? 
Huh? Are you asking me that question? <laughs> my, my recommendation, Mr. Mickey, is that uh, the transaction uh, needs to be looked at as far as, I remember purchasing 600 and something acres. As far mm -hmm. as the river batch and all, that's probably included and adds to the acreage that's in these tracks that you're talking about. And B1, B2, and B3 is in the southern end of Citrus Lands property. It is not the property that the port bought. The port bought the northern end, and B1, B2, and 3 was a subdivision that was done prior uh, to the port ever purchasing this property. So uh, that's where the new uh, borough pit probably is. A how, did, how did we learn that we had another 132 acres? You just told me. We just, we just took it, huh? <laughs> My God. I don't see the argument or the, the discussion. Yeah, I, just I think, think we get off base. Let's, let's stick to what we're talking about here, okay? Right, that's what we're talking I, about. I have a comment right fast. Yeah, just Ms. before Williams. you decide. <coughs> My only concern with this is if we are resubdividing this property and this property is sold and there was agreement by the current property owners to donate it, it very well may not be donated by the that's per people that purchase it. Is that the intent to resubdivide? Yes. Is it to sell the property off? No, it's not to, sub to sell it off. There's two owners that own the property as, as a whole right now. Mm -hmm. They're splitting it up. So they're chopping it up in Between these, those these two. pieces, and those two same people are still going to own it. Okay. And whatever commitments they made are still there. Okay, thank you. And they cannot and, actually... And I just end with saying is that, you know, when we're looking at the whole picture, we go back to what the Corps of Engineers asked for and got. When it was Citrus Lands property before these people got involved, the Corps set an alignment and they said, you as the parish have to go get the property. They told us how wide to get it, went to Citrus Land, and my understanding is Citrus Land donated everything the Corps wanted to us. Now we're changing location. We're not, what we already got, are we going to use it? It belongs to us as a gift from Citrus Land. Now we're going to another location. I know the gentleman said that we have, and I, Blair Ritten, I don't want to say anything because he's not here, but that, my understanding was that existing drainage going through there, we had no legal servitude on that drainage. That was the idea of obtaining this now, was to get. It's not following exactly the alignment of the ditches that come across now. He's asking for more property than the existing ditch is there, because he's going to have to put a road alongside of it to service the canal, whereas in the rear of the property, the same road that was going to service the levee would have serviced the canal. So he eliminated one road need. But now this is all changed. And, and you know, if, if it's donated to you at the time of the subdivision, I don't have a problem. I think the parish is going to be wasting money on putting a canal there instead of where they originally, core originally wanted it. And I'll close with that. Uh, Ms. Alvant, your wishes? No. Ms. Amitra. Who else? I was just going to say that. Um, if it was their wishes to just divide the parcel of land so each owner can have the said tracks in their name, that is the only way that they can get it in their name because it has to become separate parcels and recorded in a clerk of court as a separate parcel of property. Now, whether they're going to donate it to the parish after that, that is, that's a separate issue. But for them to be able to to do what Mr. Hogan said that they're going to do, it has to be subdivided first. Mr. Chairman, um, may I ask yes, Ms. Amitra a question? Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Amitra, were the objective criteria for resubdivision met with the application? Yes, right. sir. Okay, if that is indeed the case, which I'm sure you're not misleading us, then it's probably not a good idea to deny it because that could cause us trouble down the road. The only thing is to go back to, um, instead of inserting the amendment, is to take out the amendment and have it read as a regular subdivision. The amendment was only placed in there if they were going to have a perpetual servitude on the parcel. 
if well, they wish to just go on and not have it um, anything on it as a perpetual servitude, then they would have to amend the plats because each plat is saying that on the literature that it is for a perpetual servitude as well as in the ordinance. Well, 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 right. I would recommend that you leave the perpetual servitudes in. I just wish that they said they were in favor of the parish. Mr. Hogan, you got a question? You know, I'd rather leave the language in there as, as added because it says that we, it will be done. When y'all come to get it, we are going to, uh, y'all going to acquire it. We know that it's coming. That whoever, whatever entity gets that particular portion of the property, they know they're buying it where a servitude will be acquired on it. No questions asked. No arguments. Um, you know, on the plat. I guess, I guess an amendment to this would be objectionable if I inserted the language that must perpetually suffer the servitude of drainage for the future winding canal and flood protection parish in favor of the parish. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, no. I, I can't make any commitments for the owners. I know, you know, whatever commitments they made, like I said, they're, they're honest as, as, as long as the day is long. Whatever commitments they've ever made, they stand by. And uh, with those simple three words, I'd love it. Yeah, Mr. I, Chairman, I, I would I would uh, ask that we uh, I would move on it and offer it for a vote as is with the yeah. with the with the amendment that's that's on the table. You know, okay. I was hoping that in my mind when I first got here, I was under under the impression that it was uh, the donation was, a, was 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 understood, but then. Do we have the question now becomes, do we have the right as a council to deny uh, a, a permit that meets all, the, all of the criteria according to our permit department? So I'm going to offer it. I'm going to offer the amendment? Mm -hmm. Okay. The amendment's offered and where would, can I remove my, I'll remove my second. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, this amendment, the amendment that you have before you. No. Okay, so, right. Mm -hmm. right. So, and the, when I read the amendment again, whereas the owner slash developer understands and acknowledges that he and all the subsequent owners of the property must perpetually suffer the servitude of drainage for the future canal widening project and slash or flood protection project to be created and tracks DR-282 as accommodation note states on the attached plat of survey. And with that, I offer. With that, you offer. I'll second. We're going to take them individually or in Globo. I, I would prefer because it's different plaques. If the council doesn't have a problem with it, we can do it in Globo if and just no have because it's the same the amendment table. on each one, correct? A right. through A six A two through six A six or. Duplicate legislation, right? Just yes. different tracks of land. Just some tracks, but so just uh, no objection from the table. Could we take them in global? Anyone? Okay. Well, well let's read them. We read eight, two, six eight. a two. Miss Ford, will you read six a three through six a six? Three. An ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of the property of Woodland Borough Pits LLC. Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana is shown on the map of resubdivision into tract F, resubdivision tract F into tracts F-1 and F-2, property of Woodland Borough Pits, LLC, Junior and Point Celeste Plantations, by Hugh McCurdy III, PLS, dated April 3, 2016. The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost to the Plaquemines Parish Government or the Parish of Plaquemines and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Number four, an ordinance approving a plan of re-subdivision of the property of Woodland Borough Pits LLC, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, is shown on the map of re-subdivision track DR-4 into tracks DR-4A and DR-4B. Property of Woodland Borough Pits LLC, Deer Range Plantation by Hugh McCurdy III, PLS, dated April 8, 2016. The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost to the Plaquemines Parish Government or the parish of Plaquemines and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Number five, 
an ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of the property of Woodland Borrow Pits, LLC, Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana, is shown on the map of resubdivision, Track J, into Tracks J-1, J-2, and J-3. Property of the Woodland Borrow Pits, LLC, Woodland Plantation, by Hugh McCurdy III, PLS, dated April 8, 2016. The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost to the Plaquemines Parish Government or the parish of Plaquemines and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Number six, an ordinance approving a plan of resubdivision of the property of Woodland Borough Pits, LLC. Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana is shown on the map of resubdivision Track A into Tracks A-1, A-2, and A-3 and A-4. Property of Woodland Borough Pits, LLC, Myrtle Grove and Wood Park Plantations by Hugh McCurdy III, PLS, dated April 8, 2016. The owner having fulfilled all the requirements of the subdivision and resubdivision ordinance of the parish of Plaquemines without cost to the Plaquemines Parish Government or the parish of Plaquemines and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Thank you. Um, Ms. Salvin, you're offering global? Yes, I, I do. 6A3, 4, 6, 5, and 6? Yes. I will second them. So the machine is open. Any more questions? No. Okay. Also, Mr. Russo, if I'm hearing you correctly, once this has passed and uh, they start the realignment, there's a possibility that it's going to cost the parish, right? Well, the way I'm looking at it is that uh, Mr. Hogan has told us that if there was commitments made uh, for donating this right away, this perpetual servitude, that they were going to honor those commitments. So I'm voting for this with the understanding that uh, after this subdivision is completed, they can divide the property among the two owners and turn over a servitude to the parish under the donation that was promised uh, previously. Now, uh, as the attorney said, you know, it's no harm, no foul. They follow the rules. They can subdivide their property. And we're just hoping that they honor the commitment to donate the servitude to the parish so we can move on with the project. My, my comments were based on the fact that if we could have done it all in one swift move today, subdivided it, took the servitudes in favor of the parish, uh, it would have saved probably six to eight months, and it would have been at no cost. So that's where I'm standing today. Well, we will see when a realignment occurs. How much we got to fork up? It's happening. <laughs> all right. Any more questions? The machine is open on. 6A2 through 6. The ordinance are granted 8 to 0. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. We'll, we'll revert back to item 1. Item 1A2, there's no proclamation. Uh, item 1A3, status report by the President, Mr. Terrio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, recently, my assistant, Crystal, handed an envelope to all the council members. Uh, if you remember, Monday, during our budget review, Ken Dugas went over all the uh, projects going on, currently going on in our parish. In your envelope is a FEMA project, a status on all the PWs for your information, it, it gives you all the latest update on the PWs. Also in your package, there's uh, Mike Gaffney provided us with three PWs that he has filed a second appeal to GOSEF. The appeal has been granted by GOSEF, which means GOSEF will send those appeals to the FEMA and hopefully we'll get in birth for the, the amount of money you see on those documents. Uh, you have an also in a letter from my office after meeting with legal that we've been having a lot of questions, a lot of comment about our parish property and our general liability in regards to special events, recreation, et cetera. So what we plan to do in the near future, give you a list of all our insurance companies, what are the premiums or what are they for? We need to look at this because, you know, when you look at a liability, we have very little coverage, especially in our parks and in our areas, you know, so we open for liability. Also in your package, uh, 
is, I think next week is the, what, 66th Annual Empire Rodeo, and I'll let Council Member Edgecombe elaborate on that. Yes, sir, thank you, Mr. It is uh, the 66th Annual uh, Empire South Pass Topham Rodeo. It is being held in a different location this year. It's going to be held at the Empire Boat Harbor, which is on the south side of the Empire High Rise Bridge off of Highway 23. Um, and to the insurance, we, we do have our own policy, uh, Mr. Ed, which also protects the parish. that will be in effect come Monday uh, before the entire week of the, you know, of the event. So the okay. parish will be covering that. Yes, sir. Um, asking everybody to come out and enjoy. We're going to have bands uh, Friday and Saturday. DJ before that. The tents open at 11 o'clock. There's numerous local vendors uh, selling food and also uh, taco toddies. Uh, Iguana's daiquiri is going to be there, along with the wrestling team selling uh, soft drinks and water and what have you. Uh, we did have problems last year with duplication of vendors selling and doing the same thing this year. It's not like that. It's a set uh, uh, venue as far as what you're serving, and nobody else can duplicate it. So everything's going to be under one tent. The tent's going to be 60 by 150 foot long, so it's kind of easy uh, or not easy to miss. And I ask everybody to come out and participate. Also, the following week is the Empire Boat Blessing, Blessing of the Fleet, which will take place at 1 o'clock in Bay Adams, just outside the floodgate. Uh, and that's August 14th. It starts at 1 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Ed. Okay. Also in your package, uh, you have a, a flyer from our EOC manager, uh, Patrick Harvey. LSU is conducting a hurricane evacuation study with Plaquemine, St. Bernard, Orleans, and Jefferson, and there's some information in there for the council to, to have at their disposal. Last week, Council Member Salvant uh, Hilda from our grad department and I met with the people at HUD regarding the Port Suffer Library, and I'll let Council Member Salvant elaborate on that. Yes, thank you, Mr. <coughs> President. Yes, I'm, I'm just happy to announce that after 10 years of, of litigation, and not to rehash any, any harbor or, or rehash any bad feelings, but I am happy to announce that Port Telford Library will actually have the shovel ready at the, at the end of 2017. So we will have that, that new library reconstructed. And I'm just happy and elated. And I would like to thank Mr. Mr. Therat for his efforts, Ms. 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 Hilda with the grant department and HUD, the folks at HUD. It, we made some concessions. We had to downsize our library. But otherwise, uh, we didn't downsize it. It would have been lost. The money would have been returned. And it, it was just would have been a missed opportunity for the folks of, of my district. And, I'm just overjoyed. I, I, I can't wait until we cut the ribbon on, the, on that, that well-deserved and needed library. Thank you. And the last item, Mr. Chairman, is after the budget meeting on Monday, our directors have been meeting with our assistants. We've come up with our uh, structure of all our departments, and we have already identified four or five departments that we can merge, eliminating a complete department. And what we plan to do, once we have the package together, is provide it to the council, get input from the council before we do anything, because after that, we, we'll have to go to civil service, and we have to get the council blessing those procedures. So hopefully, within a couple of weeks, we can provide you with a package. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Terrio. I, I'd just like to make an William. announcement. Um, this weekend, and it actually started today, the 18th annual faux pas fishing rodeo is happening at the Venice Marina. Uh, as of right now, there are 110 teams that have signed up. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very great event. Uh, it's going to bring in a lot of people, probably over 2,000 people to the Venice area. Um, it's going to boost um, our sales tax revenue because they'll, they'll be purchasing gasoline and things of that nature. Um, they'll have entertainment, um, food. Uh, so. Come on down and enjoy a good time. It's going on until from July 27th through July 30th. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. William. Anyone else from the table? Uh, audience, any questions? All right, we'll move on to item 
two, I mean, I'm sorry, three, beer and liquor life. Mr. Butler, none. Mr. Black? None. Thank you. Mr. Juno? None. none. I have none. Ms. Salvin? None. Okay, Mr. None, sir. Ms. Combe and Ms. Williams. I don't none. have any either, sir. Also, Mr. Jeff, you would, on uh, 4A1, I would like to withdraw. 4A1, please. Okay, 4A1 will be withdrawn. And also withdraw 7H. 7 what? H. And 7H <clears throat> will be withdrawn. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll move to item 4A2. CHS Inc. Application number 2016-576, dated July 6, 2016 to install steel monopole dolphins for new barge fleeting adjacent to existing grain facility and repair existing revetment with riprap across from West Bank facility, Carlisle area on East Bank. Council Member Bartholomew. Offer. You offer Mr. Bartholomew, may I ask for a second? Second by Mr. Russo. It's all good, Mr. Bartholomew? All good, everybody approved. Ready to go. Any questions from the table? I have one question, yes, sir. sir, if you would. Uh, Mr. Mr. John, I know recently we had some uh, residents from the East Bank come to the one of our Bell Chase meetings uh, complaining about noise from one of the companies. Is this company going to create an excessive amount of noise or not, sir? How do they do? They nobody live within 10 miles of that area. <laughs> no problem. I, so I just had that because some, some people in the West Bank asked me about it and said, well, yeah, that's you know. North of Phoenix. And, and south of White Ditch. That's in that what, an area called right, it's, it's all nobody vacant. lives. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? The machine is open. I'm sorry. On the uh, what's the name okay. up there? Uh, Albertine. Albertine. Albertine was out in there. She lived there. <laughs> the, machine, the machine is open on the permit. <laughs> and the permit is granted 8 to 0. Move to item 64A3. I'd like to thank our councilman. Whitney Oil and Gas LLC application number 2016-600, dated July 15, 2016, to install two-inch gas lift line and two-inch flow line, Garden Bay, Island Bay Field. Council Member Bartholomew. You offer, Mr. Bartholomew? Offer. Next for a second. Second by Mr. Russo. Mr. Bartholomew is good. Everything is approved. Permits ready to go. Any questions from the table? Audience? Machine is open on 4A3. And the permit is granted 7 with an extension from District 2. Move to item 4B. John and Carolyn Guidry, new mobile home in a floodplain 165 East Bayou Road, Lake Hermitage, Louisiana. Council Member Trufant Salvant. Ms. Salvant, you're offering? No. Uh, for a second. Second by Ms. Williams. Permits Ma ready to go. Ms. Amitra, Ms. Mr. Metcalf. Ready, ready to, to go. go. Okay. Any questions? Uh, for the record, sir, I'll be present now voting. You'll be present now voting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else? The machine is open on 4B. And the permit is granted 7 to 0. Move to item 4C. Shady Oaks Trailer Park conditional approval for six additional trailer park spaces. Shady Oaks Lane, Bell Chase, Louisiana. Council Member Edgecombe. Mr. Edgecombe, you offering? Yes, sir. I'll offer. I have question for permits and zoning. Wait, we need a second. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, second by Mr. Williams. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, everything is good, Mr. Mike? Uh, Mr. Yes. Mitra. I see there was some some notes made on it strictly for infrastructure. Uh, it's 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 in keeping with everything. It, 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 it passed for the installation of the needed extra infrastructure. It meets with the square footage for the extra spaces and the in the mobile home ordinance. It's approved by all the departments. Matter of fact, I double checked on it. Yes, Late yesterday afternoon, just to make sure that we had our ducks in a row and okay. everything looks good. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. 
Any other questions? Audience? Machine is open on 4C. And the permit is granted 8 to 0. Move to item 4D. A resolution approving the issuance of a special business occupancy permit to Sergey's for the place, placement of a commercial stand to sell snowballs and snack food on property located in an A2 rural or agricultural zoning district at 36941 Highway 11, Triumph, Louisiana, all in accordance with application number 2016-187. Councilmember Williams. Ms. Williams, you're offering? Yes, I offer. I'll second. Uh, I just want to yield to Miss Amitra that um, everything is ready to go all of the um the permits is that yes ma'am everything is ready to go uh the surrounding property owners received their 15-day notification i didn't have any letters of objection or nothing stating that anyone was opposing no calls no questions miss squash is just here if you all have any questions but as far as i'm concerned it is is ready to go okay and i just want to thank um miss squash and her husband for providing this opportunity and this service to the community. Good luck on your business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more questions from the table? Audience, machine is open on the permit. And the permit is granted eight to zero. Skip, skip that whole page, man. Skip that page. Move to item five, introductions of resolutions. An ordinance, Mr. Bartholomew. Have done. What? <laughs> Mr. Black? Yes, I have a couple. He didn't get it yet. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it real quick. <laughs> An ordinance to amend the 2016 manpower structure and operating budget and otherwise to provide respect there too. An ordinance to amend. 2016 manpower structure and operating budget. Otherwise, we'll provide respect there too. That's Thank all. You. Just those two. Did you know none? Ruth Ash President and as designee to conduct an inventory of all the buildings located in the government complex on F. Edward A. F. Edward a Boulevard and to seek proposals for rental lease purposes of those buildings which will not be used by the parish government and otherwise provide respect there too. In order to amend the five-year capital improvements plan for the extension Peters Road bypass project, project and otherwise to provide with respect there too. And a resolution to approve the cooperative agreement, Louisiana government number 20001975 with the state of Louisiana Department of Natural Resources for the Plaquemines Parish local coastal program implementation and to authorize the execution of said agreement by the parish president and otherwise provide with respect there too. I have a few. A resolution to rescind, annul, and set aside resolution number 16-218, which granted a trailer park renewal to Frank Daigle for the Shady Oaks Trailer Park located on Shady Oaks Lane, Bell Chase, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance to amend and as amended to readopt the Plaquemines Parish Code of Ordinance relative to permit fees and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance to amend the 2016 manpower structure operating budget due to workforce reduction and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. An ordinance to amend the 2016 five year capital improvement plan and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. The the, an ordinance established a CMRS emergency telephone service charge in a in accordance with the ACT 665 2016 providing for the amount the procedure for collecting and for the expanding of such service charge and otherwise to provide with respect thereto in order to amend the 2016 operating budget various funds various departments various line items and otherwise to provide with respect thereto in order to amend the 2016 manpower structure and operating budget due to workforce reduction and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. 
an ordinance to adjust the millage rates levied on the dollar of the assessed valuation of all properties subject to ad valorem taxation within Plaquemines Parish, Louisiana for the year 2016 in accordance with Article 7, Section 23C of the 1974 Louisiana Constitution and the LA Louisiana RS-47. 1705B and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. That's all I have. Ms. Salvant? I have none. Thank you. Mr. Edgecombe? Yes, I have one. An ordinance to amend the five year capital improvements plan by appropriating $1,215,175 from the Corps of Engineers for the acquisition of LERDs, land easements, rights of ways, relocations, and disposal sites. <laughs> for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers NOV storm protection levy projects from Oakville to Venice and otherwise to provide with respect there too. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Ms. Williams? Thank you. We might now move to item 6B. An ordinance to amend the general fund 2016 operating revenue and expenditure budgets, recreation, facilities, and service departments and otherwise to provide with respect there too. Mr. Black, you're offering? I'll second it. Mr. Freeman here. It's a grant or is it a... Mr. Freeman, you want to talk about this or uh, I, I mean, I can explain it or... That was a grant. It's basically the funds and the amount of $1,000 have been received from the National Recreation Park Association lies by the Recreation Department. And second, any questions? Audience? Machine is open on 6B. And the audience is granted 8 to 0. Move to 6C. An ordinance to amend the 2016 manpower structure and operating budget and otherwise provide with respect thereto. You offer, Mr. Black? I'll offer. Actually, I, uh, I have a substitute. you have enough, you have enough. You have enough? Yeah. yeah. All right, you're off in that substitute? Yeah, off in substitution. X by second. X for a second. Constitution? Yeah. Yeah, I'll second. It's been seconded by Ms. Williams. Mr. Black? <laughs> I not realize it would be that hard. It's, uh, <laughs> this is, all it is, is basically doing is uh, we just edited some <clears throat> positions that were are going to be um, filled later on, but this is pretty much... Uh, a list of positions that are vacant uh, and funded, and we're going to go ahead and defund these positions. We have general fund positions, road maintenance fund positions, and a public health fund position. Um, if you want, I can go down a list for the benefit of everybody to tell you what positions uh, we're going to hopefully defund and put back into the emergency fund. Uh, the parish president's office, the secretary, director of administration, the director itself, the sales tax, a field auditor, human resources, a supervisor, maintenance, a master electrician, recreation northeast bank, public groundkeeper, recreation south, public groundskeeper, recreation south, workflow coordinator, Dave Ant Pool, a lifeguard, 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 Dave Ant Pool, a lifeguard. Dave Van Poole, a lifeguard. Dave Van Poole, a lifeguard. Dave Van Poole, a lifeguard. Telecommunications, assistant manager. Engineering, engineering intern. Flood control, a truck driver two. Flood control, a low boy operator. Um, flood control, heavy equipment operator one. Coastal zone land superintendent. Coastal zone land party chief. 
Prom, a tractor driver two. Prom, a public groundskeeper. Mosquito control, a fog truck driver. That is a savings of approximately it's five hundred and seven thousand two seventy from the general fund, forty thousand seven forty from the road maintenance, and seven thousand eight hundred from the public health fund. Um, and I've discussed this with the administration at length uh, at the Monday meetings and at other times to make sure that we're putting in that we're not we're make that we're not getting rid of positions that are critical. Um, and if we have people that's in positions that are not critical positions, and we get, we plan on maybe laying them off in the future to move those such good employees to these types of positions, uh, I'll let Mr. Terrio. Listen, when a new president comes on board, he or she may want to have the council fund these positions, like the uh, director of administration, the secretary. So for the next five months, we can save a chunk of money. Yeah, in 2017, before we do the budget, approve the budget, we can just refund them if the new president chooses to do so, or asks us to do so. Does anybody? From the table, have any any questions? I just have one question. Um, does this include all vacant positions? No, I think the two vacant positions that we took out was a foreman in recreation and a uh, a low boy operator um, at the request of those particular directors. <coughs> uh, I can. I mean, if you want me to elaborate, why? Well, I was and just wondering about the foreman in recreation. You're doing away with three other positions. What's the But, I mean, because I, I think Mr. Freeman wants a foreman. Um, and where, where would that foreman be, and what, what would his job duties be? That, that's my question. I'll let Mr. Freeman answer. That. Mr. Freeman. Ms. Nicole, those positions were people that had uh, retired, uh -huh. taken other jobs, and uh, one other one, those three, were people that were deleted automatically on their own. Right, correct. And the position of foreman, which was funded, you knew that, and that position was one of those positions that he had taken a job with the school board. We would like to fill that position again in-house if possible. Mr. Chairman. Any, any, yes, Mr. Bartholomew. Concerned about the position as electrician, the electrician. We don't have one, do we? Yeah, I'll let Reverend Mike uh, elaborate on that. Yeah, because I don't know if we need to do <laughs> eliminate that position or what. <laughs> it's called crawfish. Thank you for crawfishing out. We we advertised that position uh, for about two months, and we went into negotiations with an electrician, and obviously he turned the position down. So what we're doing, we are in the process of getting three quotes from three different electricians. Uh, to hire on an as-needed basis. And we're just comparing the prices, what they're going to charge per, per hour. So uh, I have the quote from two. I'm just waiting on one more. And I should have that either tomorrow or early Monday morning, and I can present it to you. But when we try to hire in-house, nobody applied for it. One person applied for it, and then uh, he decided not to take it. So that's where we are with that. And re advertise What is going to, uh, the thing I'm concerned about the cost when you go out and, and with other contracts is what it's going to cost us to do what we need to do. Because mm -hmm. I know uh, that we're having serious problems throughout the parish and we've been utilizing the guy off, you be, you've been working it out with the yeah. guy from the ferry department. Yes. But I don't know how long that will last. I was wondering if we just can table that p particular position until we can find something, or I either have to come back to the council again and say that we really need to have this position and, apply, and uh, open it up mm. for advertisement. But once we move it out, that means we can't advertise, right? That's correct. So I think we need to leave it there. All right. Well, if you want to leave it in there, and in the meantime, I'll still get the three quotes and I'll present both options to you. If anyone uh, applied for the job, Great, but if not, at least we'll have a contingency plan 
uh, based on the lowest quote from different con uh, electrical contractors. All I'm, all I'm saying, the money is not being spent anyway mm -hmm. if we just leave it in, in the pool until you work out something. You know, if it doesn't work out, then we can always cancel it out because the money still be there. It's not being hired. Then if we can find somebody, I think they'd be already in place. The, the position being already in place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how long we're going to play the charade back and forth with this position. I mean, I'm, I like to leave it in. Um, just, I'm, I'm really <coughs> I think going back and forth. Yeah. Well, it's not a charade, Mr. Black. I'm not playing charade. I, don't, I know, but. But, I mean, the, well, no, the analogy you use is charade. This is strictly business here. We don't have an electrician in Black and Patch government. We need one. And it's not charade. And any time you go prioritize stuff and go out there, it's going to cost you more. Now, the thing is, what is being fiscal responsible? That's the question. As we've had this discussion for about three, three months. Yeah, we still saying I'm still saying you know, the same thing. And believe I think me, I'm the only, only, electrician. Way gonna, only way we're going to attract an electrician, we've got to raise that salary. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's so low. Right. And that's the thing. Any, any licensed electrician. Can't get somebody to do it at that salary, and that's a whole nother. Okay. We, we need to do what we need to do. And I agree with Mr. Bartholomew. We need to, 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 to be mindful of, of, of our approach with this. You know, a master electrician, I think, is much more needed than a civil service administrator, a human resource person that we elected to move forward with. And here we don't have a a master electrician for the entire parish? I totally agree. I have a ton of lights out in my district. And this is not Councilman Black's ordinance to get rid of a master electrician. I introduced this to be fiscally responsible and put money back into our emergency fund. We've talked about the master electrician for months and months and months. And they have advertised in-house. And nobody wants the job because the salary is so low. It's too low. And there's nobody else that's qualified. So. Well, we need to we need to, to, to elevate that that. I that. agree. Well, I agree, but in its current, I mean, we can defund it and then create an, another position. We have to go through the whole civil service process to create that new but position. The salary we giving everybody else new. promotion. We giving others promotions. I think they're giving promotions maybe to, I mean, to people who are, who are going into a job that's actually created. The master electrician position is created. There's no other classification above that for an electrician, I don't believe. I mean, so you would have to, Alan, you'd have to rewrite the position description and rewrite the salary, et cetera? Hold on. Mr. Mr. Russo's got a question. Hold on. Cut me off all day. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, the master electrician, if uh, exceptional qualifications don't come into play when we're hiring from within, uh, because that's an opportunity to bump the salary 15% to attract a qualified individual. So I guess that's the question I have. Advertising out to the open because y'all did pass an ordinance lifting the, the freeze on that one. And that one um, is posted currently, you know, but we just can't find anybody with that electrical license that's willing to accept the job for that appointment. So you're saying one it has to be posted externally? It is, it is posted externally. Right now. One option you do have is you can come to the commission and request um, a special entrance rate for this position. Um, and they can entertain that from administration and um, they'll, you know, take that into consideration. But you would have to be willing to budget, you know, this position at whatever that special entrance rate would be. So, so I'm still asking my question. When you get an applicant, can you offer, if they have a license, and some experience, exceptional qualifications, and bump the salary? Our rules do provide for that, but because budget, the budget has not, um, like merits or not uh, budgeted within that, that excess funding is not there. So we have not well, offered that to anyone uh, the, so far this year. The only problem I have with that is it's been vacant for so long, so whatever salary is in there is more than what we need. To accommodate that. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I know uh, Reverend Giles had spoke to the individual. I think he was wanting more than what the step 15 would be with a special interest uh, But I'm getting to personal, personal issues. I mean, wasn't an individual fired? Okay, now he's negotiating a higher salary to come back because we need an electrician? <laughs> I mean, was, come on. 
he was the only applicant that we received for the position. Right. Well, let me clear the record here. I'm not negotiating for anybody. I'm asking simple questions about how do we get somebody on the payroll with an application and if there's exceptional, exceptional qualifications to be considered to allow that pay to go up since you can't get anybody to apply. Exactly. So I'm not talking about any individual or anything like that. I'm talking about a master electrician that we all agree we need and <laughs> Is that an option? Yes, they can offer the 15%, but we're not getting any applicants. And that wasn't directed towards just you, Mr. Russo. That directed at just, we keep going back and forth with this thing, and now it comes up all of a sudden at this meeting when it's been laying over from um, four council meetings. Um, and we directed Giles and I had this conversation. I mean, we've had the conversation about whether or not to take the, the, the mass electrician off the rolls or not. And we agreed to take it off, and he's the director, and he, is going off for quotes, and he made the comment to me that he thinks that the quotes, because it's as an as is needed basis, it's going to be cheaper than hiring a hiring a, a new a new person to be a master electrician. Hey, can, Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Mr. Aren't aren't some of these positions like foreman supervisors when they're hired, they're supposed to have uh, credentials, multiple, uh, uh, be able to do multiple things, like uh, say, for instance. Uh, a maintenance supervisor, isn't he supposed to have an electrical uh, degree or electrical license, a plumbing license, all that? If, if they do, then like we were talking about dual roles, you know, people, you know, stepping and doing extra things while we're in this, this crisis, couldn't the supervisor, being that he has electrical contractors or, or license, couldn't he do it? I agree with you. I think to that degree, that the supervisor should have a knowledge of electrical, plumbing, and all, and all that stuff, but not necessarily license at it. We're talking about going hook up a generator to the high school, right. high voltage and all. It has to be licensed. With I mean, it, it, we've done a little checking with the, what we have as far as current staff uh, with the parish and what is out there as far as licenses. And we've been able to trace it back to maybe one individual in maintenance who would may or may not be there. Uh, I forget his name, and maybe that's not important anyway. But getting the, the, the minimum qualifications to, to, to qualify or to be qualified for this job is, yeah, is not, well, I mean, we can test. The permits department can test and license an individual to become a licensed electrician in Plaquemines Parish. So it can be done for the right qualified person with the right background, and we could certainly look at doing that too. If there's a current individual who, who has the background that uh, dealing with, with, with you know, electrical work and, and has a, a, a more than a layman's uh, uh, knowledge or, or a journeyman's knowledge of, of electrical work, can be tested and qualified if that's the would make things quicker and that's the so way we need to go if we have somebody currently on actually get some in-house stuff done rather than to trying done. to go out and hire somebody off right. and that's what the past employee had he only had a um, parish license we tested him in order for him to get the job that he had and that's, that's very okay. that's very good information to bear in mind the person that had the position that was let go was tested by the parish and had a parish level license, which when it comes to the work that's done for us and what we need done on a regular basis, weekly basis, daily basis, it's normally at a level to where a state license is not necessary. State license kicks in for bigger dollar amount, bigger projects. We can normally get by, the past person got by, doing the work that we needed to get done with a parish license. So if that's something that we can help with to test this person, and uh, the chief inspector, Mr. Vukovic, can sit the individual down, give him a, I think it's like a two-hour test. Get Mike and, and get uh, him tested, yeah. It's not easy to pass, it's, but somebody with a lot of background should be able to do Mr. it. Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's an option. Anybody else want to introduce this thing? Because I'm, I'm going to withdraw it. No somebody else can deal with it. I'm going to move on it. It's leaving yeah, the electrician. We're ready to move on it. You ready to call a vote? Any more questions? I mean, since the, since the electrician is the only one in question, maybe remove the electrician for now and move on the rest of them. Listen, I've had months, and nobody's called me except for Director Giles about this. I don't know why 
Well, if Director Jones all of this, feels so, that's his wishes. I'd love to have an electrician. Believe me. Well, this has been my concern at every Monday meeting. It's not that I always have protests. At every Monday meeting that I met with the administration at Monday meetings, it was my concern about the master electrician. Always. You want to re uh, when you look at it again with a different salary, that's fine. We can can do that. But what we're offering right now, no one wanted the position. It's not like we're not trying, but no one wanted it. So uh, you might have to look at diff a different salary, and maybe that may attract some people. Okay, my question then is, you, um, you, you accept what is presented today to do, to move in that direction, to eliminate that position? Only because we trying to find someone and no one wanted the position. Now, if you want us to re-advertise at a different salary, maybe somebody might, might jump on it. But as of right now, no one wanted it. I think that salary is what thirty-two thousand. I think plus it was thirty-two thousand like entry 15 level. Fifteen percent would bring it to what forty-eight plus benefits. Might attract somebody. It, it, look, in order to move this along, if uh, we want to take our off the amendment to delete line fourteen, if there's a second, we move on and adopt the rest of it. I'll tell you what. Just why don't you go ahead and just reintroduce? I'm withdrawing it. No, I I just have a suggestion. If if Director Giles feels confident that a contract electrician can get the job done. For um, you know minimal cost, then I say we move on it. It's his. It's his department. I call a question on the amendment. Or the no, I didn't offer the amendment. I call a question call on the entire subject on matter. The I've already withdrawn it. Mr. Black, that, that defeats the purpose, but it's because I, you know how hard it, it, we it's work it's on this and to come here and do this all the time. It's been withdrawn. Anybody else want to introduce it? It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move to item. Six. I need right for withdrawing it. Six C. You don't want to take a stand. That was six C. I'm sorry. We'll move to item six F. In ordinance to amend the 2016 firefighting fund operating expenditure budget, firefighting department, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'll offer an extra second. I'll ask for a second. The firefighter. It's been offered by myself. I'm asked for a second. It's been offered three times. It dies for lack of second. We're rolling today, Six, gentlemen. Uh, no. Okay. We'll move to item 6G. In ordinance to amend the five-year capital improvements plan for the upgrade Ironton Park project and otherwise provide with respect thereto. You offer, Ms. Salvant? Yes, offer as read. Oh, I need a second. I'm asking for a second. Second. Second by Mr. Russo. What you said, offer as read, Ms. Yes. Any questions from the table? Audience? Machines open on 6G. And the ordinance. Oh, The ordinance is granted eight to zero. I got to do H. Okay. I thought you we'll move, moved to item six H. I thought he would draw on it. Huh? Drew that. Are we? H is. You moving on it? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm move sorry. to six H. A resolution appointing the District 8 member of the Plaquemines Recreation Advisory Committee and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Mr. Mr. Um, Edgecombe, you're offering with on line 12, inserting a name? Yes, sir. Is that this? Jonathan Short. Short. S-H-O-R-T. So item line 12 will be Jonathan Short. Yes, sir. With that, you're offering? Yes, sir. Second. i second. Second by Ms. Williams. Mr. Edgecombe. Offer is red, sir. He's a good gentleman. Uh, actually, I'd like to thank... Um, 
Andy Boudreau, which is one of my constituents in the district, who uh, corralled this gentleman for us. And I think it would be an asset to the committee. Okay. Very good. Any questions? In the audience? Sheen is open on 6H. I don't know where I'm at now. <laughs> and the resolution is granted. Yeah. I got dilated today. Mr. Chair. Yes. I would like to go back to 6F and reconsider. You want to do a reconsideration mm -hmm. on 6F? Yes. Okay. There's been a motion for a reconsideration by Ms. Williams. Or second by Mr. Edgecombe. The machine's open for the reconsideration. Is that what we really do in reconsideration? We, we didn't consider anything. It died for lack of a second. <laughs> no. There's nothing to reconsider. Hold on. Our legal team. Hey. Is, there's a question from the table. 6F died for lack of a second. Can it be reconsidered? I was going to second it, but I didn't have time to read it. So it died. Re reintroduce it? I think, uh, I think as long as you don't adjourn. Yeah, if it's still in the same meeting, it's still as long as you don't adjourn. So it can be reconsidered. Yeah. Well, because no action was taken. So what are you going to reconsider? Don't reconsider, just go back to it. Just go back to it. But it is, it's a motion to, uh, to uh, motion to yeah, yeah, just a motion. You would make the same motion if you got a second this time. Yeah. So you don't have to reconsider. Okay. There has been an extra reconsideration for Ms. Williams. It's been second by Mr. Edgecombe. The machine is open on the reconsideration right now. And the vote is 8 to 0 for reconsideration on 6F. <coughs> Ms. Barr, would you read 6F? In ordinance to amend the 2016 firefighting fund, operating expenditure budget, firefighting department, and otherwise provide with respect thereto. I'll offer again. I'll ask for a second. A second. Second by Mr. Black. This is an increase that we are bound by state law to give the firefighters 2% increase after three years of continuous service. There is in their budget. This is just taking money out of the firefighters' budget for those raises. Are there any questions? Audience? Machine is open on 6F. And the ordinance is granted 8 to 0. Now we'll move to 6I. Defer. So everybody get a raise. 6I is going to be deferred. Yes, sir. We'll move to 6J. A resolution authorizing the parish president or his designee to do all things necessary and proper to negotiate, execute, perfect, and enforce a favorable lease agreement with Haspel and Davis Milling and Planting for the continued use and operation of the new Caledonia Park located along Highway 15 in Point of Lahash and otherwise provide with respect thereto. You offer Mr. Bartholomew? I do. Ask for a second. I'll second. Second by Ms. Salvant. Mr. Bartholomew? Okay, what this is is just a, to renew what we've been doing before in the past. It's been a park, but somewhere along the line, the document got misplaced. And when we tried to start working at it, uh, we didn't have it. So that's why it took so long to bring it back. And Shane finally worked with the landowners and came to an agreement that they're willing to, to let us continue using it. So we have the documentation it has to be uh, negotiated with the president and then that means we can continue using the park. We do you still have the uh, stuff on the park. 
Just trying to legalize it. That's all I'm trying to do. Any questions from the table? Audience? Machine is open on 6J. And the resolution is granted 8 to 0. Mr. Chair, can we go back to introductions, please? Um, okay, we're right back to introductions. Mr. Um, Edgecombe? Yes, sir, I have one. And I noticed them in the 2016 manpower structure and operating budget and otherwise they provide the respect there too. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, while we're there, can I withdraw my two introductions? Withdraw your introduction. I had two introductions that I introduced. I would like to withdraw those introductions. I would like no longer like to have them introduced. Mm -hmm. Okay, they've been withdrawn. Thank you. Okay. We'll move to item seven. What you did we don't have under anything under A. Would you read seven B? Update and present presentation by District Seven. Salvant. No, I'm going to defer. Defer. We'll move to item seven C. Discussion of drainage. Council Member Roussel. Mr. Roussel. As you know. I'm back today talking about drainage and I would appreciate if we had any progress on the specific project uh, that we've been talking about for some time now. Vendrella Drive, any progress? No progress? Yeah, maybe, maybe they gave, they gave us, um, what was it? Um, three weeks to get to, get that permit to go in the base. And if three weeks just about up, some maybe this, at the end of this week, maybe today or uh, next week, I'll be able to let you know something on that pretty soon. That's what they gave me, three weeks. All right, and the other- Week before last. The other item is uh, the drainage servitudes off of Barrier Road. I've gotten several complaints about them need to be cut. What? Barrier Road? Yeah, they're behind your house, Stanley. <laughs> well, a little while back, we, we kind of cleaned them out. Yeah. And we were supposed to go back up there the first chance we get and do a couple a couple, couple more things they kind of left out. Uh, it just, it's coming pretty soon. All right. All right, we good? <laughs> All right, we'll move to item 7D. Update by administration on water compliance projects and loan application. Yes. Council Member Roussel. Uh, I know if we've, if we've got any progress on the uh, loan applications or the grants. Yeah, yeah Council Associates have to rework the uh, PR because what they did, they included the, three, uh, the 20 inch line in the original PR and we shared with them that that was a separate, so they, they, they kind of had to do the paperwork over. Uh, but right now, uh, forgot the guy name for Kyle. He's in discussion with Chris Bordelon for USDA. So that's working pretty good. And uh, also uh, this week, uh, Tommy Surpass had to submit uh, the water rate study uh, to them also. So everything is going pretty smooth. Hopefully by this week we'll hear something positive. But all the, all the paperwork has been submitted. We're just waiting on USDA to uh, respond to it. Okay, thank you. All right, move to 7E. Barbara? I don't have a 7E. Hmm? 7E? Discussion. Discussion. Discussion regarding construction of boat launch by Justin Myers. Mr. Oh, Bartholomew. that's on, that has F on mine. Oh, well, I'm um, sorry. Okay, Mr. Bartholomew? Yes, uh, I'm surprised I'm here, but we need to know the status of the Boat launch, anybody have any ideas where we are with that? Shane, you have anything? Uh, no, sir. no, sir, I don't have uh, any information on that. Um, I'll check for you, though. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll advise them as such. Good. We'll move to 7F. District one update. Yes, uh, several things. First of all, 
I'd like to thank the administration and the council members on behalf of the senior citizen for the ramp. It is poured. It is curing. So I want to thank you all very much to make sure I, I pass that on to you for getting that done and supporting the, uh, uh, the ordinance resolution to get that done for them so they can get underneath the building during the in climate weather during the rainy years, uh, they during the, during the season. Also, I'd like to, the administration can look into the Tabney Road by the bridge and the Gravelly Bridge on Highway uh, 39 headed towards Highway 15. We have some big old dips in there, and people are still complaining about it. So I'd like to see if we can get an update from engineering about where we are with that, with those projects. Also, I want to make sure that we... Uh, understand that the I think we have still have the problem with the lilies back here yeah, I think Mr. somebody Mr. somebody in his office said that they will not sink if we spray them so I don't know what else can be done with that uh, maybe the Board of Health can come up with some kind of idea or make some kind of recommendation what can be done with the lilies and the uh, pool is clean the board is blue kids are swimming I want to thank the administration for that along with Seven Trent for getting that done. Uh, next week will be our last week of recreation program. Here at the center, school is about to open. We will continue with the pool service uh, on weekends only because we hadn't had really an opportunity to use it much this year, so we're going to try to extend it as long as we have some revenues in, in place. So on behalf of the kids and the community, I want to thank the council for making that affordable to them to have a good recreational program during the summer months. And we hope that uh, next year we can continue with that. Also, we had purchased a bus from the school board, a $5,000 bus. We got lucky. So we do have a school bus, and what the intentions are is to expand the recreational program next year to Braithway where we can bring the kids to the event center down this way to Bracey Griffin Center and also where they'll be able to utilize the pool. Now we're not asking the uh, parents to buy new insurance or anything like that. The parents, they're going to have to generate the funds and go to the volunteer firemen to generate the revenues to pay for the insurance of the bus, but we will provide trying to provide the recreation uh, services to all the children on the East Bank next, next summer. And again, I want to thank all y'all for your patience and, and support of that. That's all I have right now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. I'm defer item G. You deferring G? Yes. Okay. 7G will be deferred. We will move to item 8, approval of the minutes. I'll offer. Offer by Mr. Bartholomew. I'll second. Second by Ms. Williams. The machine is open on approval of the minutes. <laughs> wait, wait on the approval. And the minutes are approved eight to zero. Move to adjourn. Wait, wait, wait one, Miss, Mr. Terrio. Next time we meet out here, can you back this table here when you guys are voting? It looks like a little red laser pointed at us, you know. It doesn't look good. <laughs> we take just swing our table back out here. We take that under consideration. They got nine little lasers pointing at us. <laughs> no, but you are here. Okay, there's been an offer from Mr. Sale in the middle. Yeah, thank Mr. you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Roussel, second by. I'll second. The machine's open on adjournment. Just hit it. With a vote of 8 to 0, we are adjourned at 419.